Actually, let me just turn on my bedroom light super quick. What's up, everybody? It is 2 o'clock on Wednesday. You know what that means. It's time for So What's the Catch. We are here on this beautiful January 19th. Uh, we got a lot of NFL football to talk. Uh, why don't we dive right into it, boys? We got Josh here. We got James here. Uh, you guys want to talk some NFL football? Of course. Of course. Of course. That's our favorite. That seems to be the favorite sport on this show, so let's just go right into it. All right. Well, let's start. We'll just go right down the list in order. It looks like that's how we have them on our rundown here. Yep. So let's keep keep things organized here for once, and we'll run down this thing. So we had the Bengals take care of the Raiders. I'll be the first one to admit I had that one wrong. I did, um, too. I did, too. So go ahead, Hi. Josh. Go ahead. Take your victory lap there. Yes, um, I get to take a victory lap on both of you today. <laughs> it's good. Way, in, my, in my wild card picks, undefeated you had a really good day but you got to start picking against the spread you're too good to not pick against the spread <laughs> gotta pick against the spread i do but what i want anyway the Bengals covered regardless they were yeah. the you know so they covered this game easy burrow looked like joe burrow has looked for the past few weeks and that's phenomenal mm-hmm. um controversial whistle at the end you know we've kind of seen a couple of those but um we saw the Raiders with a chance to win. We saw the ball in Derek Carr's hands with a chance to go down the field and take a lead, go down the field and tie. Um, mm-hmm. Both those efforts came up short. So, uh, they did. yeah, kind of reminiscent of some of the endings that the Browns had this year. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, yeah. Y- you mentioned uh, the, the whistle, okay? And that got a lot of discussion. That got a lot of uh, time in regards to the we got you, buddy. We're glad you're here. We can hear yeah, we got you. I, I will uh, transfer this over the computer right now. I'm driving, but I can still hear you guys. Sounds good, buddy. Okay. Me, so I'm going to mute you until you get where you're going and turn your camera on. All right. there, there was a whistle. Um, everyone was focused on the whistle and whether or not it impacted the play. I don't think it impacted the play on the touchdown. However, however, the rules state. When there's a whistle, the play has to be blown dead and started over. Okay. Sorry, Cincinnati. That should have been called back. That should have been a redo. Chances are they probably would have scored again because they're really good. But, like, that whistle happened. That touchdown shouldn't have counted. Yeah, that, that's a big play, and that's a big point of the game, too. And and I, I agree with you here. You know, it, the, the rules are the rules. You know, I, I when it when it happens to your team, it sucks. But, right. you know, when you're on the other end of it, you're you're – you're adamant about it. It's, Hey, the rules are the rules. This is what happened. And you know, it's, it's not right, but um, I mean, the NFL has came out and made some statements about the officiating crew from that game. Had they not been uh, suspended? That was, the, that was the Jerome Boger crew, wasn't it? Oh, you're right. You're right. That was the other crew. Yeah. Yeah. So I, no, anyway, it's kind of been a theme of uh, the NFL this season, uh, poor officiating at questionable moments of the game. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So what it, the one thing that uh, Josh and I were talking about off camera, uh, he thinks the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl. I don't think they're ready. Uh, my concerns with the Bengals are the offensive line um, and, you know, not getting the running game going. Um, that concerns me a little bit. You know, Burrow having to throw the ball, you know, 35, 40 times. Um, you know, it's great as long as it's working, but it, it, you'd like to see them get the ground game going a little bit more. Uh, I didn't see much from Mix in that game, and that kind of concerned me moving forward. But that's where I stand on them. But I'll admit I was wrong. They look great. Yeah. So, first of all, I was just muted, so I don't know if you heard any of what I said in that little bit. But uh, in t- I want to just touch on that call on the whistle controversy a little bit, and then I'll dive into the Bengals more. Okay. Being that that play happened in the second quarter, yeah, it resulted in what ultimately was the game-deciding touchdown. But the Raiders were able, for the most part, to overcome that, and they brought it to within a seven-point game, and they had an opportunity to win it at the end. Derek Carr Mm -hmm. just made a bad pass Mm -hmm. um, that sealed it. So... Yeah, that that play was a big factor, and maybe it was the design. No, I don't think it was the design factor, 
but it was a big component. I'll say it like that. It, it, it mattered in the grand scheme of things. Um, deciding, obviously, I don't think it's deciding. But it, it, in terms of, you know, the whistle and the, what the rules are, the play should have been redone. And who knows? Maybe he throws an interception. Maybe he fumbles. Maybe they don't score. Maybe they have to settle for a field goal, attempt and miss. Maybe he gets blocked or returned for a touchdown. There's so many infinite possibilities that exist that we didn't find out because the play was incorrectly officiated. I'll give you that one. I will give you that one. But ultimately, I think the bigger factor was Cincinnati just had the more explosive offense and the Raiders just weren't able to generate that the same type of offense. But to touch on what you guys were just talking about, I agree. Cincinnati, yes, I'm crazy in picking them to win the Super Bowl. I know. Um, But... What, the reason I say that is I love what they have at the skill position player group. I think – I know Kansas City has Tyree Kill, and I know they have Travis Kelsey, but that's only two players, whereas Cincinnati right. has T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, a very underrated tight end in C.J. Uzama. Joe Mixon's a solid running back. So I just think that group is – the best and i think that's what can propel cincinnati i think they're a fun group i'm not ready to make them the best chiefs still have yeah the best, sorry uh it, it, that's before even adding the 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 quarterback situation to it because you know me cole harman's very good he doesn't he didn't get mentioned just there and, yeah and uh excuse me um, but <laughs> the one part the one part i wanted to touch on too was even though they didn't give him the ball much josh jacobs was he was really running the ball well he had 83 right. yards on only 13 carries um, that's another area that is of concern for me is I, I don't know if they go, you know, when they go against a team like Tennessee and Derrick Henry, I, I just don't know how, you know, they're going to fare in that type of game because um, I anticipate that that's what they're going to plan on doing. Obviously, I, I don't think that's a secret to anybody. So oh, you're yeah. right. And now Cincinnati is going to be without Larry Ogunjobi. He's on the injured reserve and he's a pretty good run stuffer. As yeah. His time here. So Josh that, brought that up uh, uh, off camera. He, that's a really big piece of their defense that's going to be missing there. Cause he and they is, have a couple other defensive injuries. So, Who hey, was the other one, Josh? You mentioned it on TSG. Who was the other one that went out that I game? I think his name's like Trey Hendrickson or something like that. Yeah, Trey Hendrickson. Defense that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you're so, right. So that – go ahead, James. No, I'd say that's also going to play another factor. I mean, uh, the, the Titans are – they're. Not an explosive offense, but they're a, they're a team that can impose their will. They're a physical offense. So and you eventually get worn down by that type of offense. And the, the Bengals don't have a great defense. They have a defense that got them to where they are. And when you lose players, it's not great when you're going up against this type of, type of offense. So let me just give you a hypothetical. Let's say the Bengals jump out to a 14 14- Again, this is hypothetical. Let's say the yeah. Bengals jump out to a 14 to nothing lead. Do you think the Titans have the type of offense that can erase that type of deficit? Because I personally do not. Oh, I don't either. Because you're putting the ball in the hands of Ryan Tannehill, who needs to be a complimentary type player and not the player of the offense. Similar to like what we have in Cleveland, he is a passenger offense of the offense. He's not the driver of the offense. The driver of that offense down in Tennessee is the running game, mainly Derrick Henry. If you had to rely on the arm of Ryan Tannehill, it's not going to be a great result. We've seen that before, and we'd see it again. Yeah, for sure. I agree 100%. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day in the NFL, it feels like quarterback play is as important, if not more important now than it's ever been. Uh-huh. And that's that's really where I, I, I kind of pump the brakes on, on teams like Tennessee and guys like Tannehill and – even guys like Derek Carr and Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, those guys that are just kind of right on the border, the, the people with a lot of talent, a lot of arm talent, and, and that show shines, you know, signs of, like, really good games. And you just don't know if they're going to be enough to get them over that hump. And when you look at the quarterbacks that are still in it, you know, it's like, man, it's just all-time greats, Hall of Famers, you know. So that's the only thing that I, I, I see is, like, is Joey Burrow ready to compete at that level? Uh I don't know. You know, if, if he does, it'll, it'll be the story of the year for sure. Yeah. Um, with Joe Burrow, people are going to say, oh, he hasn't really been in a hostile environment in the NFL, and he hasn't been on the road in a playoff game, all this and that. I'll be, I get it. College football atmospheres in NFL 
playoff atmospheres aren't necessarily the same. However, during his time at LSU, Joe Burrow was part of big games, not always on the road. I get that, but still, that's a big factor in it. And one of those big games just so happened to be against LSU's, arguably LSU's biggest rival at Alabama in a high-profile matchup against Nick Saban, who's one of, if not the best coach in all of college football. So, well, he I is. I mean, let's, let me just address that. He is. Yeah, he is. Okay. <laughs> you can say that. You can say let's that. Just, let's, just, let's just greatest of all time college football. Yes. Mm-hmm. Continue. But my overall point is I don't think you can just dismiss that the idea that Joe Burrow has – is inexperienced when it comes to big games and hostile environments. Yeah, usually I'd have a huge problem comparing pro and NFL or NFL and NCAA at any time just because there's just so many differences. But Josh, you make a good point. When you're going up against the greatest coach in the history of the game and arguably the most dominant, you know, franchise in the country, but you know, college pro amateur doesn't matter, Alabama. Um, that's as big of a stage as you could possibly play in at that level. So, Josh, I think that's a good point. You know, he has had moments where everything was on the line and all eyes were on him, and and he did show up. But at the end of the day, this is the men's league. You know, things move a little bit quicker. It's a different level of play. Um, But, yeah, I'll give you that one. Normally I would fight you on something like that, but that's actually a really interesting point because Nick Saban and Alabama are the truth. So that's a tough place to play. And we also saw how well he did in the national championship against Clemson. Again, The national championship in college football is not the same as NFL playoffs, but it's still a big stage. Right. But, you know, uh, you also have guys like, you know, Jalen Hurts and Tua Tungavaloa who have showed up and done things on the big stage and then they get to the pros and it doesn't work out that way. So there's definitely examples of both. Um, but it, in this case, Josh, yeah, that's a really compelling argument. Like it, there's no bigger stage in college football that somebody could play than, you know, at Alabama against Nick Saban with SEC, you know, title on the, on the line. It's, that's huge. So yeah, that's yeah. a really good point. Uh, uh, one last thing on this, uh, in this Raiders Bengals game before we move on to the next one. Um, I don't think the, uh, series that, or the, the way the game ended for the Raiders was definitely, uh, a great way they come up on first down they immediately come and spike the ball they they did not need to spike the ball there they could have taken a shot at the end zone um and they could have uh had four shots to score instead of just three by clocking it they purposefully ended up taking away one of their chances to score and tie the game and i agree with you on that one and the way they handled that was just poor yeah, yeah, that's a really good point, James. Chirk, all you missed is uh, we launched into uh, NFL playoff coverage. We were talking Bengals and Raiders. Uh, do you have any thoughts about that Bengals-Raiders game before we move on, or, or the Bengals in general? I mean, it could have been us there. I wish that was us. And and it, it, I don't know why they're um, the football gods, they're blessing them now well, with a playoff win. Let's look at who their quarterback is as opposed to who our quarterback is. And I think that that may have something to do with it a little more so than the gods. I think yeah. it also has to do with the skill position players. Yeah, they have, yeah. I mean, the only difference is we have a better offensive line. They don't. I mean, that's fine, but they have the best yeah, yeah. quarterback in the division. We have the worst. So yeah. that's yeah. a problem. I'm with you, though, Chirk. It hurts to see the Bengals succeed when, you know, in recent memory, they haven't exactly been the most dominant franchise in the AFC North. It is a bummer to see them there while we're at home. I agree with you there. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to move on to the Bills and the Patriots, though. I mean, man, what I mean, Belichick kind of got the doors blown off of him there. It's, and that's <laughs> why. It's it's because you guys, the know, wagons. you guys know why. It's because nobody circles the wagons. I love it. Yeah. Um, I, you do I took any, Buffalo uh, here. This is one of the few that I got right over the weekend. I had a pretty poor weekend betting against the spread. Man, on social media, they were doing like some WWE moves on their tables. Right. Oh, Bills Mafia! Bills Mafia is legit, my friend. They they were like doing some uh, 
They were like Rob Van Dam doing five star frog splashes on tables. Right. You want to see an electric tailgate, any Browns Bills game tailgate, that is absolute electricity from both fan bases. Who and the Brown bases respect oh. each other. They have fun. They're like, okay, each each group is unique in its own way, but it's always a good time. Yeah, yeah. cold Brown weather, Bills Midwestern Bills towns, Bills. like it's a really yeah. good atmosphere. Well, one's East Coast, borderline Canada, but the uh, Browns I mean, were pretty close to Canada too. If you go across, yeah, the we're country. actually pretty close. To, yeah, you're right. <laughs> hey, the we Browns are close to Buffalo to be fair, New but... York this year, this coming season. So, right. Um. Okay. So we we got to talk about the 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 quarterback matchup here: Josh Allen versus Mac Jones. Um. Mac Jones came a little. We'll say he came up a little short. He played like a rookie that game. I would say he, he had and, a macaroni arm. And Josh Allen, on the other hand, 21 for 25. I see your cringe there, James. <laughs> I saw that cringe in your face. But listen to these numbers real quick. 21 of 25, 308 yards and five touchdowns, no turn or no interceptions. So Josh I mean, Allen had, had himself a day. He had more touchdowns than incompletions. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah, that's when a very good one point. Those games, that's just amazing. I believe uh, he had a perfect game as far as uh, you know everyone else is concerned in regards to what he could have done as the quarterback. I would agree. That's as close to a perfect game as you could pitch as a quarterback. You know. Yeah, I would agree also that that was basically a perfect game. But mm -hmm. here's what I really liked, not specifically about Josh Allen, but more just the Bills offense in general. Throughout the season, when I would get the opportunity to watch the Bills, um, it just felt like they were so Josh Allen dependent. And whether it was in their passing game, for obvious reasons, because he's the quarterback. But also in their run game, I didn't really see Buffalo utilizing their running backs at all. Or mm -hmm. It was all just very Josh Allen, Josh Allen, Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. So for them to come out and use Devin Singletary and some of their other running backs, I really liked that from Buffalo. It showed me that they are a balanced team and that they, they – they do trust their uh, running backs. I mean, but yeah. when they win by this large of a margin, uh, I mean, that's when you're going to see the the incorporation of the other running backs. Uh, if this game finished at 24-21, you're not going to see the uh, the inclusion of Nathan Singletary all that much. It's still going to be primarily a Josh Allen game. Yeah, two touchdowns for Singletary, uh, 81 yards on 16 carries. Uh, and then, you know, business as usual for, for Knox, five receptions, 89 yards, and two touchdowns. You know, mm -hmm. he's emerged as one of the most uh, talented red zone threats in the league at tight end. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, they were really balanced throughout. Uh, everybody that needed to show up for the Bills showed up. Um, and, I, I mean, what, what does this say about Belichick, though? I, I, I don't know that this really changes my view on him much. No. Uh, I, I didn't know if anyone had a take on Belichick or his game plan for this game, or do you think that they were just outmatched? I mean, they're a little bit outmatched. I mean, they had a rookie quarterback going into to Buffalo. We had a build yeah. up fighting. Um, <laughs> we did have a build up on the field. <laughs> so uh, you, you look at you look at that. You look at New England has a very old and slow defense. Okay, so that was always going to be problems. Okay, yeah. their defense is old. It's slow, and mm -hmm. so what you look here is that you see New England was able to get back into the playoff picture. They were able to get back into the into being a relevant franchise after one down year with the Cam Newton experiment and how, uh, how badly that ended up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they used essentially last year as a reset while they did lose in the first round. This is a stepping stone for the, the Patriots to move forward and build upon because they're, they're showing that they're not just, they're not just done now. They're ready to get back to, you know, competing for championships. I yeah. mean, I don't know if this was Mac Jones more so the bill, the Patriots defense that led him to the playoffs. Mac Jones was yeah. fine. He, he he looked a lot like Tom Brady in their first Super Bowl run, but that doesn't really work anymore. So I wouldn't say right. Mac Jones is like Tom Brady. I would say he's more like – Well, I'm not saying he's like Tom Brady. The way he played was very similar to how Brady was that first Super Bowl run where right. he was a game manager. Mac Jones is yeah. a game manager. He was a really good game manager, but he was a game manager, and that's fine. Right. And when you're a game manager like him, you know, you can't afford to turn the ball over twice. You know, you really got to protect the ball. And those two INTs, you know, that was that was a rookie playing in Buffalo. Like that, that's something that you kind of had to expect. But I think that just the, the fact that the Patriots ended up making it to the postseason 
and, and, and making it this far. Like, I agree. This is a stepping stone game. This mm-hmm. is just going to, you know, recharge. They're going to recharge, refuel, come out with a, a – they're going to be a team to compete in that division for years to come. I don't yeah. think necessarily that this means here's the Bills, Josh Allen and the Bills are dominating this division now. I don't necessarily think that's the case. Yeah, I don't think this is a changing of the guard. I think New England's still going to be right there. I think Buffalo has to win the division uh, at least three more times to really say this is like a changing of the guard. Um, And this is probably a given, but what that game showed is obviously when you have 50 mile per hour wins, it's going to affect how the game is played, but it really showed that that game was an anomaly Um, because Again, Mac Jones in that Monday night game only had to throw the ball, what, three times? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. that was all he attempted was three. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I this mean, game was always going to be different than that game. Like, exactly. I, I think we mentioned we mentioned last week that, like, you can't even look at the film from that game to prepare no, for this always. week. Um, but, yeah, you could, you could really see the difference uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I, I do we did have a circle the wagons in the chat. I just wanted to highlight that. <laughs> we got circle the wagons in the chat. What's up, sis? Thanks for being a part of the show. Just I do think the that. one thing New England could have uh, looked, taken away from that Monday night game, although it was an anomaly, is they were able to run on that Bills defense. And you saw like how frustrated the Bills defense was afterwards with the mm-hmm press conference and all that. So I think that's the one thing you could have taken away from that anomaly game. And and on the bigger picture, and I guess this is where I'm pretty much got the end of of this game. My takes from this game is that the the AFC East right now reminds me a lot of the AFC North. Okay. It's the bills and the Patriots on top. The AFC North, it's mostly the Ravens and the Steelers on top. Okay. Okay. And then the Dolphins are essentially the Bengals and the Browns are the Jets. They're just not relevant. It's just what it is. Fair point. I would point. agree with that. I would yeah, agree with I that hundred <laughs> percent. I can't even, I can't even disagree with anything you just said. It's what it is. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's going to be an exciting year in that division next year. I'm really excited oh, yeah. to see to see those two games are two games that you definitely have circled on next year's schedule. Like, oh, yeah. they're both going to be primetime games. I, I, know also see, sure. I also see a Browns comeback next season. I do not. I, don't. I hope you're right. But, I, uh, man, well, they, they had a mediocre season. A lot of times when there's a mediocre season, then they have one bounce back season. That It's usually the pattern I see in the NFL. Well, for the Browns, the way that this has worked is that they have the one good season, then plunge into the pit of despair. Okay, mm-hmm. to All to right. just mid. So basically, they're just like middle of the pack. That the middle of the pack is a good season for for the way things have gone for the past twenty two, twenty three seasons. That's that's a good that's a good uh, that's a good season for them. Think about 07. and after 07, how far just they fell and just didn't become relevant again until what twenty thirteen nine season with Brian Hoyer. Yeah, that was a 10 win season. Braylon Edwards had 16 touchdown catches. Like the Derek Anderson was slaying the rock. Like they were doing a lot of good things then. Yep. And then they were relevant again for eight years, seven years. Yep. Then they were relevant again for another five. You know what I'm talking about? What's that, Turk? Baltimore, the tight end was really good. They always have good tight ends. (laughs) Historically, they've always had good. I was trying to say Kellen Winslow, but I know here in Cleveland, he's lost his reputation for other off the field issues. Yeah. Okay. And we'll talk about him. But uh, let's move to the next game. Uh, Jalen Hurts stinks. That's my opinion. You think he stinks? He's terrible. Look at these. How do how did they get to the playoffs then? They're a goddamn wing. That's how they got to the playoffs. They're a team not even passing the ball. They're running the ball. Let's, exactly. not, let's not even pretend they're running a modern offense, okay? They're oh, running man. some straight 1940s crap that doesn't work. They played a real team, the Bucs, and they got destroyed. Exactly. Yeah. The 15 points that the Eagles put up were in complete but, garbage, garbage time. time. What is 16 and 9, then? 16 TDs and 9 interceptions. TD. Who cares? Thank you. That, thank you. That, that's, those are, those that's, are really, that's positive. 
Prove the positive differential, sure. But you know what? 16 touchdowns doesn't mean jack shit in the modern Yeah, NFL. yeah. Everybody has a positive running, differential cares? in the NFL now. Like, if you're yeah. an NFL starter, you have a positive differential. So that's, that's, not, that's, that's not really saying much. Well, in today's game. I yeah. Mean, I think even Lamar Jackson had a negative. Uh, he had a negative touchdown. Lamar Jackson didn't have a good year this year. Yeah, he had a bad he year. Still made the Pro Bowl? Who oh, here we go. The <laughs> Every Stop week. breaking up the Pro Bowl. It does not mean jack shit. Get the fuck out of here with that. The Pro oh, Bowl. Yes. Yes, the I love Bowl, it. But the Pro here's, Bowl here's still you. leads you to the Hall of Fame, though, unfortunately. What does? The Pro Bowl. No, it doesn't. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. Then how did – you said it doesn't? It doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's all pros. It's MVPs. It's Super Bowls. Yeah, things but that matter. Not- that's the only reason. All defense. All, it, yeah. Here's a really good example. Look at the NBA All Star Game with the fan boat right now. Like, look at some of the guys that are in and some of the guys that are out. It's really bad. Like, it, it, uh, All Star games. All Star games are they're a joke. They they're a complete they're, they're joke. You think, I hate them. So you think more All NBA third, for second, third. Those matter. Those matter. All, all, defense, matter. all defensive yeah. teams, most improved Absolutely. player, all that stuff. That's Rookie stuff matters, of the year. Because fans are not involved. Okay, yep. when fans get involved, shenanigans happen. Well, Who fans, remembers? I think hold it's on. like fifty percent now in the oh, NBA. Hold on, hold on. Who remembers when uh, there was the All Star Game? I think twenty sixteen, where the Kansas City Royals basically had the entire starting in uh, starting nine what? for the league. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. That. Or when Jamal Mag- a couple Mag- years later. Or do you remember when Jamal McGlure was in the All Star Game? Who okay. gives a fuck about Jamal McGlure? Okay? <laughs> <What>? but, <laughs> okay, but when fans are involved, bullshit happens. Okay, you can't like put any stock into All Stars. You can't put any stock into Pro Bowl. You can't mm-hmm. put any stock in anything where a fan is involved, besides jersey sales, jersey sales, merchandise sales. That's it. Everything else means jack shit. Okay, yeah. can we get back to Eagles Buccaneers, please? The Bucs. Sure. Sure. Stinks. Yeah. Good call. I agree. What about Let's get Bucs? back to that. But Josh, you made a really good point at the end of that before we kind of derailed there. Um, <laughs> all of the the Eagles points came in garbage time. They came in the fourth quarter after the starters were out. Like the the, the Buccaneers were done with that game. So they were dominated completely. Um, the score wasn't even as close as, you know, 16 points isn't close, but no. it was a way bigger blowout than a 16 point, you know, game. So like they and all the things that they did do well, like run the ball. Jalen Hurts, eight carries for 39 yards. He led the t- that was the team leader in rushing yards. So their scheme does not work when you go against a real team. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So it, it just goes to show that, like, if you don't have a quarterback, if you don't have a guy and you can't run today's modern offense, like, you are going to get railroaded when you come up against a real NFL team in the postseason. Right. So when yeah. all of these 9-8 and eight and 10-7 and seven teams that barely get in because they – had weak schedules or whatever it is, and they have gimmicky offenses, they always end up falling flat in the postseason. Mm-hmm. And look at the NFC East. I'm, we'll talk about the Cowboys in a minute, but just to touch on them super quick, Dallas went 6-0 and against the NFC East, but they went 6-5 and against everybody else. The NFC East is trash. They are the worst division in football. Why do you think everybody calls them the NFC least? So don't tell that to NFC. He'll tell you it's NFC beast. But don't tell it to who again? Uh, PFT commenter. Uh, I, I will say this: I believe that the AFC North can contend for the worst division in football because this division stinks too. How'd they win a Super Bowl? Who? Who? The Eagles. That was four years ago. Who cares? Four years ago. Yeah. Totally different team. Uh, yep. who, do four they even five. have anyone on the team from that team still? I, I think they might have Fletcher Cox. Uh, and Brandon Graham still on the team, I think? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fletcher yeah. Cox is still. There we go. Fletcher Cox is another one. Shout yeah. out Brandon Graham, by the way. You like my hoodie guys? Big Ten <laughs> champions here. Oh! Brandon Graham, Michigan alum, figured out. Uh, Love it. Love I like it. Brandon, Brandon Graham, but boo Michigan. Yeah. But, like, you can't. That that this year's Eagles team is not the 2016 no. or 2017 Eagles, whichever no. year you want to put them in. Right. We all have. They're, we they're have more like the 90s Eagles. 
And look what happened to the Steelers too. Like we're we're gonna get there later. We're not gonna rush yes, to that. I'm so happy they lost. But my point being is that like, you know, throughout the beginning of the season, it was like, oh, the AFC North might be the best team in or the best division in the country. And then by the end of the season, it was like, man, this might be the worst, you know, <laughs> conference in the country. And now like it does feel like this division was like it was kind of a a mirage. It was very close and competitive and that kind of misled people to think that it was good. But yeah. just because teams are close and competitive with each other doesn't mean that, that they're good. Uh, so yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, we got exposed. And unless the Bengals do what Josh thinks they'll do, um, I expect that they'll get exposed to. I mean, and here's what I'll say. Uh, credit to Nick Sirianni, uh, you know, Italian brother out there doing some work with whatever this uh, Eagles offense was and being able to get this team to the off, uh, you know, the other playoffs. Okay. Because this team wasn't good. Okay. Are they missing Doug Peterson? No, because Doug Peterson had that team in the absolute toilet last year. Nick Sirianni is just like, hey, I'm going to make this work. There's a limited ceiling and we only can go so far. But you know what? They got to the playoffs with a very yeah. bad team. Jalen Rager yeah. sucks. J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, terrible. Okay, what are we doing with this offense? It's, it's awful. It's yeah. Playoffs. Yeah. I, I agree. He did a great job coaching to his – his talent and, and to their, you know, his team's ability. Um, so he, he, tried, and, and he tried to turn shit into gold as much as he could. Yeah. And when, like when that guy talks, like, let's be honest, he's no silver tongue devil. That guy is not the most <laughs> eloquent, you know, genius sounding coach. Like I was wondering what kind of job he'd be able to do there. But honestly, I, I think he deserves a little bit of credit for, for making it as far as he did make it. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like we said, you you have such a limited ceiling when you do that. You're never going to win a Super Bowl with that kind of team. So yeah, yeah. I mean, Tampa Bay. If I had to give them a letter grade for this performance, I would give them anywhere between a B and a C. They didn't need their A grade performance. You're giving them a B or a C because they cruised to an easy victory and took their pedal up, their foot off the gas in the fourth quarter. I would, they didn't need, I'll give them an A for that. That's an A. They didn't have to That's try. A. I agree. They didn't need to have their A plus performance to beat but this Eagles team. They, they oh. did throughout the other three quarters. I, now, I'm going to come to Josh's defense a little bit here because they didn't need the type of gaudy numbers that Tom Brady typically had throughout this <laughs> season. Like, let's be honest, he had an absolutely incredible year, 5,400 yards through the air. Um, yeah. 29 for 37, 271 yards and two touchdowns. That's a good day for a quarterback, but for Tom yeah. Brady, you know, that's that's not Tom Brady being, you know, the GOAT. That's just Brady doing what he needed to do to win. So in right. that regard, Josh, I, I will I'll say it was a B performance because they they only needed a B performance and the game plan was to do a B performance. Honestly, yeah. it was just don't make mistakes, go out there, you know, we're the better team, just go out there and game manage, you know, and Tom Brady, when you're the best quarterback of all team, you're going to do that very well. And I think that's what he did in this game, but I think there's something to what you're saying, Josh, they didn't need to be the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers to beat this team the way that they did. Right. I think when they play the Rams this coming week, they will need their a plus performance because at spoiler alert, I don't have them beating the Rams. I think they're going home. That's a take. The I don't know. I think it could be a competitive game that could go to the wire. I think it could go either way. We're going to put a pin in that. We're going to yeah. circle think, back to it later. Fair enough. So to the Chiefs and Steelers? No, we're not there yet. Uh, not yet. We're going Cowboys. in order. We're, we're going oh, order. we're going to the Cowboys? Go away, Dallas Cowboys. Go away, Dallas Cowboys. Go away, Dallas Cowboys. You're not – America's team, go away. All I mean, right. That now that we've got that out of our systems. <laughs> You're yeah. welcome, America. I mean, Tell us how you really feel about the It Dallas was Cowboys. a close game. I have to put it there. Only I, because the San Francisco 49ers allowed it to be a close game. Did let's, they? Let's talk about the one play that matters in this entire game, the ending to this game. Okay. Because yeah. throw everything else out, it really doesn't matter – but there's one play in particular I'll come back to. There's one play that matters. It's it's the QB draw to get them down to like what the 25 yard line, whatever it was, somewhere yep. around there, it's somewhere around there, and then the attempted spike that didn't happen. 
mm-hmm. because the ref had to run 40 yards downfield to get where the line of scrimmage now was. Yeah, and not only that, but a little bit of a lack of awareness by the Dallas Cowboys to, mm-hmm. to not know that the ref needs to get through and spot the ball and that your center can't spot the ball for you. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I so I people saying that that that's like an unfair way for the game to end for Dallas. Like, I'm sorry, but like you got to have the awareness at that point in the game to know that like you can't run a sneak in these conditions and expect them to get to the line and set the ball and do everything you need to do. To so, I, to me, it was just a it was just a bad decision more than anything. Yeah, it was yeah. a bad play call. Apparently, they practice it, which is even more puzzling but right. uh, what that's just practice Mike McCarthy. It's they practice that play in that situation apparently but yeah. uh, here's what i will say uh in regards that that play was dumb they shouldn't have ran it there and i i really don't understand the logic however to come to the defense of the cowboys they have to rely on that ref to run that far away there, there's not another guy closer that could have spotted the ball I know. And, 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 the, and the rule is the ref has to touch the ball. They were in, mm. let's say, let me play devil's advocate for a moment. They were in the general vicinity, within a yard, right, of where he was down. Right? That's true. That's true. They right. didn't move it much. They didn't move it much. What's to say, hypothetically, you allow them to spike? Because this is a spike situation, not running a play. You allow sure. them to spike, then after be like, okay, they're actually one yard behind or where they're supposed to be, your foot just adjusted after the spike. In that situation, because of the ref running, has to go so far. Allow them to spike the ball with one second left on the clock. Adjust the ball, because who cares at this point? It's a dead ball. They just right. want to clock it anyways. I mean... Then, then, then give. I, I understand the rules of the rules, and you know we addressed the rules of the rules earlier with the Bengals. Yep. I'm just saying, this is an alternative to a referee interfering for the second time with Dallas attempting to snap the ball in this game. Because you remember... Yep. The, the referee stood there going like this, and it's like, they're trying to snap the ball, and you're in the fucking way, but, you know, they got a delay of game penalty because the ref had to stand there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah do, you, do you think Mark McCarthy should be held responsible for this? He should have canned his ass the moment this game was over. This guy's a yes. liar and a thief, okay? Like, like, he lied in his opening press conference about watching every single one of their games. He didn't. He I mean, spent all this time hanging out with Pro Football Focus. Apparently, that was a lie, too, because I can tell you right now, even the remedial analytics of PFF would tell you don't run a QB draw in that situation. Okay? I mean, I think he should just go to doing Whataburger commercials. I mean... If you guys know, know what that is, it's a <laughs> joint. In I know what Whataburger is. I watch King of no, the Hill. Okay. Yeah, I know what Whataburger, Whataburger is. It's a don't Texas worry. burger joint. We know. I just said I know what it is. Oh. I know so, what it is. I watch King of the Hill. Come on. Anyway, uh, one thing I was not impressed by uh, in this game is uh, the quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah. did not yeah. impress me much, as Shania Twain would say. Um, is he more impressive than Baker? Yes. Uh, yeah, he's still better than Baker, but that, that performance <laughs> that he had in this game is not going to be good enough to, uh, to win the next game, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a concern for me. Um, also historically, Jimmy Garoppolo has been dreadful in cold weather. Um, yeah. and they have to go into green Bay that next game. We're going to pre preview that later. So we'll put another pin in that circle back to it later. But like... Okay. Yeah. That that's just, yeah. I mean, that's really my final point was just like, I wasn't too, too impressed with what I saw from the 49ers in terms of going forward, but I will admit I was wrong. I thought the Dallas Cowboys were going to win this game. And they didn't. So. I'm not going to let, even though the 49ers won, and credit to them for doing so, I'm not letting them completely off the hook for this. Because they pretty much had the Cowboys dead to rights for pretty for basically three and a half quarters, if you will. And then, kind of like Tampa Bay, but not, not quite, because Tampa Bay had that game won way sooner than Sam Fran did. But Sam Fran didn't put that final nail in the coffin. They let Dallas hang around. They let the Cowboys, like, find their groove offensively and defensively. And it almost came back to bite them. And I got to hold Kyle Shanahan a little bit responsible for that. Like, when you see that your opponent is on the run and they're – or they're on the ropes, if you will, put them away. Don't allow them to come back. 
and almost come back all the way to win. I mean, their offense isn't one that's going to put people away. That's what I'll say. It that's not how they're constructed. Okay. And so putting it, putting the, the Cowboys away was just never going to happen. I mean, that QB draw definitely seemed like a Mike McCarthy move. I mean, it's Mike McCarthy. He's a buffoon. <laughs> and that Super Bowl he wins that he always gloats about. He blooped his way to that Super Bowl, dude. That was Aaron Rodgers, not him. That was Aaron Rodgers. That was Aaron Rodgers. That was Charles Woodson. That was Greg Jennings, the best wide receiver in all the NFL, if anyone remembers that from Madden. but Donald Driver. I do. You do remember that glitch? Oh, yeah, I, I remember the video. I remember <laughs> the video. Putting his team on his back. <laughs> Going to the mind of a Greg Jennings. Oh, yep. shit. Darren Sharper. Yeah, I remember. That name is also Baltimore, too, nowadays. Because of also off the field issues, but anyways, uh, we got the next game to go to. And Chirk, I know you've been just waiting to comment Steelers Chiefs. You have the floor. I'm happy, man. I'm glad the, the I'm glad the 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 Schittsburg Steelers got got what they got coming to them. I mean, they're not good. I mean, this this was the most predictable finish of, of any of these games this week. <laughs> it was was the Steelers having zero chance. This game kind of started off kind of weird. Uh, neither team could do anything offensively. Uh, TJ Watt got on the scoreboard first uh, with an incredible, you know, defensive touchdown, giving the Pittsburgh uh, yeah, he's, fans a little bit of hope early on. He's a generational but, talent. I, I think he, he's one of the best players on that team. It, he is. It's a shame we drafted David Njoku instead of him. But um, <laughs> <clears throat> imagine Miles Garrett and TJ Watt on the opposite ends of the lines. We could have just, you know, not even bothered with this Jaden Clowney nonsense. But yeah, anyway, we could have had we could have not no, we could have had even better. We could have had half the Texans roster. We could have Clowney, we could have had JJ, and we could have had TJ. Okay, I don't know why we're even bothering with Clowney and JJ. I'm just speaking for particularly that draft. They could yeah. have just took TJ Watt instead of David Njoku and completely avoided the entire nightmare that's been his tenure with the Browns. You but, think the Browns just like to to mess up on drafts? They, I don't just think like, they like to, it's just their nature. They're going to. But yeah. <laughs> But but looking at, at at this game, the the Chiefs ran away with this game after it was close yeah. early, after it was close early after both teams were struggling early. Uh, the, the Chiefs scored like what five touchdowns in the man uh, a matter of ten minutes of, of game time. That's ridiculous. Yeah, something like that. The Chiefs just said to the Steelers, "Yeah, yeah, your time is over. Go play at the kids' table." Yeah, five yeah, touchdowns they, from Patrick Mahomes. They they put the Steelers out the pasture. They put. You know, they essentially retired Ben Roethlisberger for us. So he's yeah. stuck now. Yeah. You, know, you can go on doing whatever he's going to do and talk about whatever he's going to talk about, but he, he's done now. Yes, yeah. he is. I, think I agree. Sorry about that, guys. I, the dog and I both had to use the bathroom. We don't have commercial breaks on StreamYard, unfortunately. <laughs> so It's all good. Um, Steelers anyway. Chiefs. Steelers Chiefs, awesome. Did you guys start talking about that one already? Or we yeah, just we got- just – talked about it being a massive it was very predictable yeah very predictable game um uh josh and i kind of talked off cam a little bit earlier today about this game and and the only thing about it is like we didn't really learn much about the kansas city chiefs in this game um kind of went how we thought it would go uh so that's my only concern moving forward is like yeah obviously like the the chiefs did some nice things mahomes had a phenomenal game um he limited some of the interceptions that has been a problem for him this year but at the end of the day, they were playing the Steelers, and I don't think it was very great competition. And I don't think that we really learned anything from this game. You know, Mahomes did great. Kelsey did great. They do great every game. We know that. Um, so, yeah, I don't have any concerns or anything from this game regarding the Chiefs. I just don't – it didn't really tell me much about, you know, what to think of them moving forward. Yeah. The only thing I can say I learned from this game in regards to the Chiefs is that they do have a running game because it felt like for at least the first half of the season, I didn't really see a running game from Kansas City. And I don't know if that's because they just didn't have one or if it was because they just refused to run the ball. Um, But I just never saw it. And in this game, I saw kind of like what I said with Buffalo, where they were very Josh Allen dependent. It feels like at times Kansas City is very Patrick Mahomes dependent. 
They don't really use uh, Clyde Edwards too much. So I like seeing Kansas City use the run game a little bit more. So I I guess I learned kind of the same thing about Buffalo and Kansas City in that regard. Well, in a similar fashion, what I will say is the Steelers have the worst run defense in the NFL. So it's not like the, the, the Chiefs have some good run game or a productive run game. They right, were able right. just to be effective against a very bad run defense. You didn't, yeah, you didn't, and, go ahead, Trent. No, do you think Clyde Edwards is a bust on their Clyde team? Clyde Edwards is not a bust. He's a useful just, player. It's just he, he, it's a different it. offense. Right. It's a different right. offense. And he's had injury issues too in the past too. So, uh, but yeah. I mean, the the leading rusher was only uh, sixty one yards for McKinnon off of twelve carries, which is good, a good average. But you know, it doesn't blow you away. Um, that's, right. that's what I meant by, that's what I meant too. Like by, we didn't learn much because like, like James said, Pittsburgh's run defense sucks. So like, mm-hmm. of course they're going to run the ball pretty effectively against it. Uh, so I just don't, I don't know that it really told me anything, you know, that I didn't already know about this team. That yeah, part but- I'll, that part I'll give you, but just based on what I had seen from the chiefs, it felt like they never actually tr- attempted to really establish a run game and but as you both said Pittsburgh has a terrible run defense but for Kansas City to have a somewhat reliable run game that I liked that part sure so we should probably move on to the last game of the wild card weekend for the first time we got Monday night football during wild card weekend. And I that thought that, awesome. that was awesome. Yeah. I, um, that. I did too. I think that this was a great thing that, that the NFL got right this season was uh, that Monday night game was really fun. Um, but yeah, man, a lot to be said about this one, a lot to unpack here with the Rams and Cardinals, definitely a lot more to talk about than in that last game. Yeah. I That's actually cool. want, I actually want to talk about the Cardinals. Even okay. though they lost this game. Now, As I said on TSG, I'm I'm not going to sit up here and say this guy needs to be fired or this guy needs to be fired, whatever. I'm not here to do that. But what I will say is maybe it's time to start considering Cliff Kingsbury's role as the head coach with the Arizona Cardinals. Because If you're not going to say it, I'll say it. They should fire his ass. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, his last yeah, three seasons, him and McCarthy he, both need to go. Uh, look at his record the last three seasons over the home stretch. 2019, they lost seven of their last nine games. 2020, five of their last seven. 21, five of their last six. When it comes to the end of the season after hot starts, Cling, Cliff Kingsbury can't coach a team. 17 of their of 22 losses that late in the season, that's terrible. If you go back they to the college, college, it's even it's it's still bad too. 13, 5 of 6, 14, 4 of 6, 15, 4 of 6, 16, 6 of 8, 17, 6 of 8, 18, 5 of 5. How would he not defend a late season coach? Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't think that should be yeah. And, and you couldn't even do it in the playoffs either. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think that uh they definitely need to do something moving forward. Uh, and, yeah. The other thing that I found interesting about this game is uh, the performance of Kyler Murray. Um, not a good game. Let's uh, no. just to give you his numbers real quick. 19 to 34, 137 yards for only four yards per. So that's four yards per pass. Uh, no touchdowns, two interceptions, a QBR of only 7.6, and a traditional hey. quarterback rating of only 40.9. Uh, so, Josh, you said this guy was going to be the MVP. Earlier, yeah, season. I looked, I looked to be on the right track early in the season, but as the Cardinals do have done the past three years, they they just fell flat on their face. I was, I'm no, I'm not gonna be right about Kyler Murray winning the MVP, so I'm conceding that I was wrong, but you'd said that in the past, well, I did, and again, I looked like I was. I actually knew what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> he had a good start to the year. Yeah, they were hot. They were, they, uh, I mean, America was all in on the Cardinals. Like they, a they lot were. of people, a lot of people wanted to see them succeed. Kyler Murray is a very likable guy. I think um, he's a phenomenal athlete. Um, to me, like one of the things that we saw this game though, is that height matters for quarterbacks. 
I'm so, like height is a big, big factor. Like this guy's a Heisman Trophy talent. You know, he's 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 a really talented player, but it, it, he's he's small. You know, and we saw a lot of balls getting tipped at the line of scrimmage. Um, mm-hmm. We saw him changing arm angles to try to avoid hands, um, mm-hmm. and and it's just a lot of stuff that really. It, and his style's not off. like. And his style's not like Russell Wilson, where like how he goes through the holes and like tries to find find a pass. He has a whole different style than Russell Wilson. Yeah, yeah. And, and in terms of running the ball, he only ran it twice for six yards. So you know he wasn't a threat with his legs that game either. So it's like, yeah, I, I, I don't I think know. You should watch some Fran Tarkington tapes. That could help. That, that's not relevant in, in modern football. Yeah. But, that's uh, well, what I will say is that he is athletic enough to to make plays with his legs. I believe he had uh, some sort of like uh, lower body injury that was limiting him uh, in that that's capacity. True. That's true. Uh, so that was not helping him. Um, but he didn't look good at all. And uh, I will say not having DeAndre Hopkins did not do him any favors. Uh, no. that, that that mattered. But that pick six he threw that was like on par with some of the worst pick sixes I've ever seen. Yeah. That was a total just bad play. I mean, it, you never want to take a safety, but he should have took the safety. Yeah. Yeah. You're better off taking a safety in that situation 100%. <laughs> that felt, given how their season finished, that felt so Arizona Cardinals. That's what I are. agree with that. I agree with that. That was a very Arizona Cardinals way to lose and go out. Yeah. So, I mean, let's talk about the other team in this game. Who, let's talk about the Rams. Before we go, yes, who wins let's the talk Super about Bowl the Rams. first, Cardinals or Browns? Neither. Neither. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know that either one of us. Neither is going to happen in our lifetime. Probably not. Uh, yeah, it, it hasn't happened yet. I don't imagine that it's going to happen right. anytime soon. Anyway, let's talk let's about- talk about the Rams though, because my pick for MVP played uh, uh, for that team, Matt Stafford. Let's talk about Stafford him. had himself one heck of a game. Uh, yes, he did. While the Cardinals decided to completely flop, uh, the Rams decided to show up and show that they're actually here, despite yeah. everyone trying to write them off coming into the playoffs. They were like, "Okay, we're here." We're a really good team. We're going to show you what's up. And they did. Heck, even Odell had a good game. He did have a good game. I yeah, think he, it shows who wasn't the problem in Cleveland. Uh, it, it wasn't Odell. We knew that. It, it wasn't exactly. Odell. It was the fit of Odell. No, it wasn't the fit of the Odell. No, no, it was no he did the fit. Execution. No, this is some bullshit that's been making its way on Twitter the past couple of days. It's not the fit. Okay. It's Baker. It's 100% Baker. Okay. Ding, so, ding, ding. It, it, Weren't they friends, it, too? The offense. It, is, it the, is it the best match? No. Okay, I will say that. But it's not the fit. This is just some passing the buck bullshit that's, mm-hmm. being, that's being generated by the Baker bros on Twitter. I'm not I having agree. it. It's complete horse shit. Yes. Yeah. I could not agree with you more, James, if I tried. But – yeah. The part conversely, his QBR 82.6 and 154.5, which is about close to perfect. So, uh, Stafford threw himself almost a perfect game as well. He only had four completions as well. Yeah. You mean incompletions? That, yeah, that's what yeah. I meant. Uh, he had okay. four incompletions on the day, so two touchdowns, no INTs. Um, you know, there are a lot of question marks about Matt Stafford. Can he win in the postseason? And uh, I think that he answered that question. Quite effectively. Um, I thought that was a very big statement game for the Rams. I thought that we saw a lot of good things um, from that team, and I think that they're a legitimate threat to uh, come out of the NFC. Yes. And can we talk about the fact that Cam Akers was able to come overcome a, I think it was a Achilles injury, like a yeah. torn Achilles or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. And he was able to come back within, I think it was six months? Yeah, he I didn't have a great game. Long. Right. He didn't have a really great game, but his, his story and his comeback was really impressive. Like to, to come back off of an Achilles injury that quick was just impressive on its own. But right. yes, he, he only averaged 3.2 yards a carry. He had a long of 15 yards. So he but had, that's, uh, like, that's enough for what the Rams do though. Yeah. In this case it was for sure. You know, it was yeah. all according to the game plan. They, they, I think that that game went exactly like from an offensive standpoint, they executed exactly how they wanted all game. Yeah. So, from an offensive 100%. standpoint, 
and and the defense too showed up in a big way too you know that they made some big plays so and i think that that's the question is can this defense you know make big plays when it matters can can guys like von miller show that they still can be productive on the biggest stage at the biggest moments and he um, can. yeah because you know what they say big players make big plays at big moments or big games One yeah, of it's two. close enough but he had close enough. Yeah. He had his first postseason sack since their Super Bowl win. So yes. you know, kudos to Von Miller. Um uh one uh, quick thing about Mr. Odell Beckham Jr. He made some history in this game. First player ever with a 30-yard reception and a 30-yard pass completion uh, in NFL history. Quite impressive. The the pass completion did go for 40 yards. Uh, he did finish with four for 54 and a touchdown in this game. Yeah, he's a freak. He's one of the only people in, in NFL history that that can do what like like he. This has always been a part of his game. They've always had gadget plays for him as a quarterback. He has a great arm. Uh, obviously, he's a very very smart football player. He is has a very high football IQ, which a lot of people refuse to acknowledge because they don't like him. He knows the game of football. Um, well, they just disregard it as freelancing. Because, and not you know, only that, Baker can't do no wrong. Exactly. <laughs> but not, not only that, but this dude, like if, if they need a kicker, he could kick a 50 yard field goal. Like obviously yeah. he's not going to do it reliably and it's different to do it in a game, but this dude hits 50 yard bombs during pregame warmups. Like, like he's out there, he's kicking 50 yarders. He's throwing the ball 60 yards down the field. Like this Wait, guy is just talking, like, he said Odell's stuck. kicking 50 yarders. Odell can kick a 50 Why he couldn't we use yarders. him as the kicker? He wanted to. He, he he is they and just were the Browns just, just stubborn to, use, were the Brown just too stubborn a, to try something unique? He's not a real he's not a real option for that. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, that's yes, he is. Thing. I'm sorry. The Browns kickers are so bad. I would rather have him. I, the Browns, what they had as the kicker of the season was still better. What you're going to get out of Odell? Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree. Yeah, it, I agree. The, the point is just I, the only point I was making about that is it's, just is how hard working he is. No, it's just like how good of an athlete he is. Like yes. he, yeah. he can do things that other human beings cannot do. And and the the thing that a lot of people in Cleveland were saying was that he was washed. And, and to say that this guy is washed, like, get out of here. Like, yeah, he, get out of here with that bullshit. He's one of the best athletes in all sports right now, period, anywhere in the world, in yep. any sport. So uh, I, I, I think that he – he really showed uh, at the end of the season and in this game that, like, he's nowhere near being done. Like, he is still very much in his prime. He yeah. is 100%. Uh, right. You know, you even saw some of uh, his former teammates here in Cleveland giving him some praise. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of them. Uh, did Baker? One specific player did not uh, say anything. Uh, Baker? I, I believe he wears number six here. Yeah, uh, he was mom. Uh, you know, yeah, I know a lot of people mom. complaining <laughs> on the internet about, you know, uh, everyone talking about Odell this, Odell that, uh, trying to say it's like a, a broken relationship and stuff like that. It's all nonsense. It, it really is. O Odell's fantastic. He He's always going to be fantastic. Uh, and the one thing I'll say is if you're going to try and compare it to a, a relationship that no longer exists, at least get your facts right. Because I saw a lot of uh, incorrect statistics out there and numbers and, and just – get your stuff right if you're going to do that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you on that one. Um, What I did like from the Rams offensively is in addition to utilizing Cam Akers, although he didn't have the greatest game in the world, I still like that they did utilize him to the extent that they did. They didn't rely on any one receiver. They didn't become like Cooper Cup centric. They didn't become Odell centric. I saw them past Stafford giving it to Tyler Higby. I saw Ty, uh, Stafford giving it to Odell, to Cooper Cup, and they were spreading the wealth around. So I loved that about the Rams offense. Yeah. And one last point about Odell, too, is like, you know, a, a lot of people who aren't very educated will be quick to say that, oh, well, you know, he's way more active in their offense and what have you. He was only targeted four times. Mm -hmm. He was only targeted four times. He's a very small part of the, a very big part of that offense. But in the grand scheme of things, he's not touching the ball a crazy amount of times, like a Tyree Hill or, or you mm -hmm. know some of these other guys. Um, so yeah, he was targeted four times. He caught the ball all four times. He was targeted for fifty-four yards and a touchdown. I mean, he had a perfect yeah. game. I mean, you, you you see some charlatans on the internet try to be like, well, the only thing he did is touchdowns. Well, touchdowns fucking matter. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay? And, and, and role in offense matters, okay? He's not the primary 
you know, uh, pass target in the offense. No, it's Cooper right. Cup. It, right. it's yeah. Tyler Higby might even be a, a, a more of a, a consistent option for that passing offense than Odell is. He but had four he's, targets as well. So, yeah. He, he's Robert Woods he was still there to the be up there as well. Mm-hmm. Robert Woods would be ahead of him if he was still healthy. Yep. Uh, you look at it, he's producing when called on, and he's scoring touchdowns. Okay. Exactly. Right. He has six touchdowns in nine games with the Rams. He had zero with the Browns this season. Okay. The other the other thing I like too is when when they are using Odell, like he he's he's playing in the X position that he mm-hmm. needs to be playing in. Um, yeah. The the Browns a lot of time would move him around and have him playing out of position or, or different style of wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, no, the Rams are letting Odell be Odell. He's an X and he's playing like an X and it's working to perfection. And and anybody that's saying that his performance in Cleveland was all you know to do with him, it's just nonsense. I think yeah. that. He's answered a lot of questions that we had here in Cleveland. Some of us anyway, but yeah. yeah. Again, charlatans. Yep. That's it. That's a very good word to describe them, but. Charlatans. Yes. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... Baker fans are charlatans. Uh, well, a lot I'm of them. Say, I'm not going to say Baker fans are charlatans, but I'll say uh, people that are. Well, Mike McCarthy fans. Uh, no, I'm saying that people that are just not blaming Baker and trying to blame everyone but him are charlatans. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's about accountability. Ba- Baker was not accountable for, for right. what happened. I mean, it, hold him accountable for the failures of the offense because it's all Odell was Odell was nothing but a scapegoat, and and exactly. everybody they've tried to use everybody on the roster as a scapegoat but I, Baker. And at I mean, the end you weren't getting a fully healthy Odell during that time. Yeah, I mean, there's some arguments to be made there, too, that, like, he wasn't fully healthy, and that's why he wasn't as productive. But to me, it was just that that Baker just was not working. He just couldn't get the ball to him. Like, he's he's not good. <laughs> it's, it's hard to put it on anything else now other than the fact that Baker's not good enough. To... I mean, so many people were clinging to the hopes that uh, Odell being removed from this offense was something going to lock everything again. But uh, yeah. as we saw, uh, last season was a complete lie. It was a fluke. It, it, it's mm. not real. Right. It was, it was right. not, it's not repeatable. Yep. It was just a, a complete independent set of games that happened to make him look better than what he actually was. Yeah. Yep. And, and yep. removing Odell again isn't just some magic fix. Okay. I it's, agree. It was com- it's complete horseshit we saw this year. He actually performed worse when Odell was removed this year. Yeah. Exactly. But right. uh, let, let's move on. Uh, we have uh, divisional round games to talk about. Yes, we do. Yep. We we're got to do it the same man. way. Let's yeah. just go. Uh, we're going to go right in chronological order as they're happening this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what do we got first? We got Bengals versus Titans. That's the yeah. Saturday 4 o'clock game. I'm putting the Titans. Titans I, are favored, but Bengals to the Super Bowl. No Bengals to the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, but that that Ohio team, it better be the Browns to win it before the Bengals do. Uh, Tennessee <laughs> is three and a half point favorites at home. Uh, I like Tennessee to win and cover. I, I, I agree with you there. I, I think the, the Cincinnati ride story, it, it all ends here. Uh, yeah. it, it's been fun. It's exciting. Uh, it, it's a team that has a lot of offense, a lot of uh, bright future ahead of them. Comeback but, player of the year in Joe Burrow, too. Get oh, that guy. 100%. Get 100%. That guy yeah, that. I agree. Comeback the player of the year. Of the year Jamar Chase. The, mm-hmm. This season was cute, but I think, it, I think now is the time for it to come to its very much expected end. Yes, I agree. If Cincinnati loses, I will come on here next week and admit that I was wrong, and I'll let you guys do well, your victory laps. Yeah, that's how it works, you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I got to do my victory lap on you guys today, so maybe next week you'll get to return the favor. Well, let me let me talk about one, one of the things that I mentioned earlier that I'm really big on this postseason is quarterback play, and uh, that's the one area of concern that I have with this Tennessee Titans uh, team. Yeah. Is that if Der- if Derrick Henry, God forbid, goes down with uh, an injury in pregame warmups or in one of the earlier drives of the game, like he's going to have to win that game for them, and I don't know if he's capable of doing it. So, uh, yeah, this game is very much riding on the back of Derrick Henry and his performance. So yeah. I will say that. Um, but also defensively, I think that the Titans are way better than the Bengals. Um, their offensive line, the Bengals' offensive line is trash. Um, so coaching goes to Titans too. I, yeah, I just give them the edge in pretty much every category outside of uh, Joe Burrow being the better quarterback. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, 
And the I mean the running game is also pretty equal. Derrick Henry is miles above Joe Mixon. Let's not, yeah. let's not even compare yeah. the two. Yeah. But yeah. if you want to give the, the Bengals another advantage, I'll get wide receivers. Yeah. On yeah. and off the field with, wide Joe Mixon, with Joe Mixon. What about yeah. Joe Mixon? On a, and off the field. I, I don't like Joe Mixon. Uh, I don't either. That's why I just said that. But, yeah, that, it's a good point. Uh, Tennessee's leading receiver, A.J. Brown, he only had 63 catches and 869 yards. Those aren't gaudy numbers by any means. So, yeah. uh, Jamar Chase on the other end of things, 81 catches for 1,455 yards and 13 touchdowns. What a freak. He's yeah. awesome. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that this is uh, the end of the road, unfortunately, for the Bengals. But Joey Burrow, comeback player of the year. Great season in Cincinnati. Uh, I think they've got a lot to be excited about moving forward, but they've got some moves to make if they want to make it to the next level. Let me ask you this. Uh, we all agree that Joe Burrow is going to win, should be the favorite to win comeback player of the year. Do you think, I know he's not going to win MVP, but do you think he should at least be in the conversation? I don't know. Put him at. I don't know how far it goes for for MVP. I don't know how like uh, how far the, the the rankings go, like five or ten. But uh, he probably should be in the five to ten range. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, when you look at the year that that Brady and Rodgers have had, like it's it's really and, really and hard. Mahomes got to be in the conversation too. Mahomes as well. Yeah, like the the numbers are Rogers. just outrageous that they put up. DJ Watt's so. also in the conversation. He tied the sack record, so he's going to be in the conversation. Well, he was my Garrett. pick for defensive MVP this year. I think that we can seal that one. So yeah, I think Miles Garrett or TJ Watt. TJ no, TJ Watt. He was my preseason Come on, pick man. for. Yeah, Watt, I was right. Thing. I was being impartial. See, I love TJ Watt, but <sighs> this is the thing. This is why James and I get called wet blankets a lot, and it's because we're we try to be objective and look at things the way they are. When I looked at things in the preseason, it was TJ Watt's a freak, and I think that in that Pittsburgh Steelers defense, he's going to have a way more productive year than Miles Garrett, who pretty much only sacks quarterbacks and isn't really involved in the run game. So I, I, I made what I thought to be a – All right, you know, let's look at this. Yeah, I don't – Looking at Miles Garrett's stats right right now. Let's, let's pull these They're up. not even close, bro. He, it's not yeah. even – It's not even – right. no football reference here. He has okay. the NFL record for sacks this year too. Yeah. Right? So, I, like, he had a combined 51 tackles. Who? Who? Uh, uh, Miles Garrett, which is actually pretty good for a defensive end. Okay, well, uh, T.J. Watt had half of that in just sacks. Yeah. yeah. TJ Watt is, it's not even a question. TJ Watt is the defensive player of the year. I don't even remember who I had as my preseason pick. I'd have to go back and watch, but. Yeah. And the one good moment of that game for the Steelers was TJ Watt ripping that ball yeah. away and running TJ, it into the end zone. Somebody, as bad as that team is, he still showed up and made a big play. And yeah, that's yeah, not easy. Watt, that's not easy to do. Backs, 64 total tackles. 21 of them were for loss, 39 quarterback hits. I mean, 52 pressures, 52 pressures. All-time great numbers for a year. Yes. And it's not just great. because of the 18th game either. Uh, I believe he sat out a, a game or two. Didn't he, he missed play. games. Yeah, he, so he would have had that record clear and just not even close if he would have played every single one of their games. And let's and, not forget that that, that 22 and a half sack for Strahan uh, came to Brett Favre basically taking a knee. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a lot of uh, controversy surrounding his last sack of the year anyway. So I know yeah. a lot of people were writing off T.J. Watt and saying, well, he had 18 games and that's not fair. And what he, didn't, yeah. he, didn't, he didn't play all the games. He exited several games early. If he would have played all 17 games, every single snap or as much as he could have, he would have played 30. Yeah. Yeah. But T.J. Watt, defensive player of the year, it's not even close. Miles yeah. Garrett, great season. Great but season. But he's a pass rusher. Yeah. TJ Watt is an edge linebacker. It's completely different. He's going to be more involved in the running game as well as being a pass rusher. It's not the same. A hundred percent sign, seal, and deliver the defensive player of the year to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for TJ Watt. No yeah. doubt about it. Hands yep. down. But We're already anyway. talking. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, Bengals, Titans, I think we got all of our picks locked in here. Yes. Um, There's only one Bengals, back. right? You're pick, I'm going you're picking, Bengals. I, I don't Turk, know. Are you picking the Bengals or the Titans? Titans. Titans. Okay, okay so everybody's on the Titans except for you, Josh. I know. I'm cool. on an island. 
Hey, I'm going against the spread this time, Brian. Yeah. Uh, I want Cincinnati in college to win, not Cincinnati in NFL. I didn't want them to win in, in college either. But yeah. let's go to the next game. I know you beat down did, James. 49ers, Packers. Packers I, all day. Packers. It's, it's Packers. 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 What are we doing here? They got Aaron Rodgers. Yep. And, the and you got just stopping the Packers is Aaron Rodgers doing weird Aaron Rodgers things, which he's been prone to do this season. Although, although Aaron Rodgers is known for not for choking in the playoffs, though. He has not beaten the 49ers in the playoffs yet. Yeah. That, so that, I mean, that, that was so long ago. No, like those teams are, you know, it they, was they a while matter ago. Anymore. They, they, they right. lost they, against them in the AFC or NFC championship in 20. It's the, it's the same. Right. But it's the same thing as we were talking about uh, earlier. Like when the Philadelphia Super Bowl team is not the same team as the yeah. team now, you know, and it's the same thing here. It's like those teams that Rodgers went up against in San Fran are not the same team that he's going to be going up against this week. Yeah, I understand that. I just thought that was an important stat to put out there anyway, that he has not beaten the 49ers in the playoffs, just as a general thing. Right. And we got to remember, this is in Green Bay. Yeah. In January. It's cold. Garoppolo stinks in the cold. Uh, This is just, it could not be a worse matchup for San Francisco, in my opinion. Like, it, it, they're going to have to throw the ball. And San Francisco throwing the ball is not a good combination. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo is not a play-from-behind type quarterback. He, he isn't. Right. No. If you got to throw with Jimmy Garoppolo, you're in a bad spot. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think San Francisco can keep this game close, though. But Green oh, Bay. I don't. This is going to be a complete blowout. Uh, I think I think Aaron Rodgers is going to put the boots to the 49ers. Do you like, eat a 50 burger? He might. I don't know about fifty. Maybe I, I could see like some forty-two to seventeen final score here. You know, yeah. just just Aaron Rodgers being like, "Yeah, I had a nice little uh, nice little week off. I'm still here. I'm still good. Uh, watch all of my insurance commercials so I can get some more money." And uh, you know, I'm, I'm the quarterback in the commercials that people like. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Mahomes. Yeah, the over under is at forty seven. Green Bay might cover that by themselves. You, you think Jimmy G has? <laughs> What you about said Jimmy what? Do you think he could have any good commercials? No. No, I don't care. Is he even that much of a personality? He seems kind of bland. Uh, He's uh, handsome. Uh, yeah. Uh, Besides they, that. They call him like Jimmy Devil. for a reason. Besides that, does he have a personality? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think uh, he needs one. Uh, just call him Jimmy GQ and let him bang some porn stars. That's all he yeah. does. That's pretty <laughs> much him. That was fun. More power to him, too. God bless, God bless you. What a life. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to we want to go right to the Rams versus Bucks? I don't know if anybody really has more to say about that game. Uh, uh, yeah, on the no. Green Bay I mean that one, that one I think is oh, a 50-50 game. Oh, Rams Buccaneers? Oh. Is that no. what we're going to? Yep. Rams Bucks. Fine. Go away, Tampa Bay. <laughs> go away, Tampa Bay. Go away, Tampa Bay. You're going to lose to the Rams. Goodbye. Now that we got that out of the way. Uh, can I invoke Robert's Rules of Order and uh, suggest a uh, a, a ban of that song? Anyone want to say Thank that? you. Moratorium on singing. Uh, let's take this uh, to a vote. Uh, ban of that song forever. Okay. Fine. Fine. Yeah. It is in. Okay. He would have raised his hand. I knew it. So you think the Rams are going to win? Is that what you're saying, Josh? Yes. Okay. I've got the Bucks in a really close one here. I also have the Bucks. I think this is going to be a hell of a game. Uh, mm-hmm. This is this is the game I'm most excited to watch. Is this one? Same. It, it's yeah, it's this one. This one's the game. I have to think about it for a second. This one, this one, I'm most excited to watch. Rams Bucks. I think it's going to be a really good game. I still, it's it's Tom fucking Brady. I mean, yes. What? What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? And, and, and so Tom Brady is not playing quarterback. It's it's hard to pick against Tom Brady. It, so I, Tom I, I, Brady I won a Super Bowl it. last year, and what I think for repeat? some weird reason, when he wins a Super Bowl, the next season he doesn't. Uh, he has repeated as uh, yeah, he's repeated before, and and yeah, that's one of the has, hardest things. Like it's the time. Well, it's one of the hardest things to do in all sports: repeat a Super Bowl champion. So you do have a point there. It's hard to repeat, but. Uh, this is a guy who time and time and time again, people have said he can't do this forever. He can't do this forever. And he just keeps doing it. And he's 44 years old now. And like you said, he just won a Super Bowl again last year. 
So until somebody dethrones this guy, I'm not going to pick against him. It's hard to. I mean, even you look, his receiving core has been decimated, and he's still producing. I mean, yeah. no Antonio Brown, no Chris Godwin. Mike Evans finally looks like Mike Evans again because of those guys being gone. Yeah, I mean, that kind of refueled him a little bit. It recharged him, I should say. Yeah, and, and so Mike Evans is going to be like good Mike Evans again. Uh, if that's the case, then teams are in trouble. Big trouble. Because that's a guy that is just like he, he could be one of the most physically dominant receivers in the game. When, when he's into it and he's playing at the top of his game, like Mike Evans is a freak. Here's where yeah, Mike most- Evans, Chris Godwin, that duo right there, it's it's unstoppable. Yeah, they- and Gronk. Uh, I mean, take Brady's one. Brady's won bigger games than this with less. So oh, that's yeah. why that's why I'm picking Brady here. Is, I mean, is OJ Howard, Howard any relevant? Julian Edelman, wide receiver one. So I mean, right. So. Brian, I'll give you that one that, yes, I will acknowledge that Brady has won bigger games than this with less. I'll give you that. Um, But I just think the Rams have a little too much firepower. And uh, they have a defensive line where if Tristan Wirfs and Ryan Jensen are out for the Buccaneers on that offensive line, that's going to create major problems for the Buccaneers. And they're without Leonard Fournette. They co- I think they might be without Ronald Jones as well. Don't quote me on that one. But I want to say he's on He's injury. questionable. Okay. Questionable. So, they could, so they could be without Ronald Jones. Right. We know they're without Chris Godwin. We know they're without Antonio Brown and all his shenanigans. Um, I just – normally I don't doubt Tom Brady. Normally, I do not. But this is one of those times I'm going to go against him. And I think I have valid reason for going against him in this case. Uh, The only players listed as out uh, who could possibly play this week are Cyril Grayson Jr., who I've never heard of, and Ronald Jones, the running back. Okay, Mm -hmm. Everyone else has been limited practice or did not practice or full practice, and – the only ones you really need to pay attention to are do not practice. And the only two guys that really didn't practice are those two Tom Brady, who like never practices and Steve McClendon. Okay. Everyone else pretty much practiced in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So if they can go, they're going to go. We have uh, Tampa Bay as three point favorites at home. Uh, Over under is at 48 and a half. I'm Um, taking the over on that one. I think this is going to be a high scoring game. Give me, yeah. give me the over. Give me the Bucks. Fire the cannons. Let's go. I'm with you. I, I like uh, I like Bucks to cover and the over. Um, but yeah, to compare these offenses, two high powered offenses, uh, 386.8 yards a game of offense for the Rams, 415 for the Buccaneers, 27 points a game for the Rams, 30 points a game for the Buccaneers. Uh, yeah, a lot of points going to be scored. Yes. I again, I understand that the regular season and postseason are two very different things, but I so you can't take too much stock from their regular season meeting. Plus, it was early in the season, but I do think it showed that the Rams can hang with the Buccaneers. I mean, sure, a hang with is is one thing. Winning in the postseason is completely different. Sure, right. and. I, I just I don't think they can. I think the game will be close. I think it'll be entertaining. I, again, I still you know Bucks and, and the over is what I'm taking. And, and on the opposite end of things, you know, like I was saying about Brady, until he doesn't do it, I'm going to ride with Brady. Well, on the other end of things, until Stafford does do it, I'm not going to ride with Stafford. You know, I mean, still, last week was his first career playoff win. Right, and and until he proves that you know he can take that team to a you know to a Super Bowl, I'm going with Tom Brady. I mean, to me, it's just mm-hmm. obvious, but it really is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, do we have any last thoughts on that game, or do we want to get to the other really good game? This uh, we got Bills and Chiefs coming up. Let's go, Bills Chiefs. Let's yep, do it. No, the rematch of the AFC Championship of last season. Mm-hmm. I'm going I Bills. You're going Bills. I'm going Bills as well. I picked the Bills preseason to. Uh, 
represent the AFC in the Super Bowl, so I'm going to ride with them. I know they're the underdogs in this game by Vegas odds and probably by real odds, but that's the more reason to love them. The Chiefs are only one and a half point favorites. Really? So, yeah, are. it's tight. Um, uh, before the season started, I picked the Super Bowl rematch, so I got to pick the Chiefs here. Uh, I'm sticking with my pick, uh, you know, sticking with integrity here. I picked Bucks Chiefs rematch, Bucks winning the Super Bowl again, so I got to pick the Chiefs here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm picking the Chiefs as well. And, and, and with the same logic in mind, because I picked the Bills preseason to make the Super Bowl, I'm going with the Bills, but I saw a lot of very good things out of Kansas City. I would not be surprised whatsoever if Mahomes goes off and they win this game easy, but I still think that the Bills win a close one in a very exciting game here. Yes. I mean, it's, it's very possible. I mean, Josh Allen was great last week, but we still know Josh Allen is still prone to the occasional Josh Allen moment where it's just like, what the yep. hell did you just do? He does have oh, those okay. moments where – and it, if like, it comes at the wrong time, it could be very costly. It's disastrous. It's, it's what it is. And I mean, I love Josh Allen, uh, you know, Josh Allen supporter from day one, uh, you know, before he was even drafted. Uh, you know, I was a big Josh Allen guy. So still going to support Josh Allen, even though he's going against uh, Brian, our, our birthday brother, and Patrick Mahomes. That's and you know who could have drafted Josh Allen but didn't? The Browns. Yeah, the, the Browns, of course. Why? So we took Baker Mayfield. We could have drafted Patrick Mahomes, too, but we didn't. And, and, and I still regret saying – I mean, I regret the fact I used to believe Sam Darnold was the guy. I don't know why I thought Sam Darnold was the guy back then. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad I was never on that trade. Never on yeah. Sam Darnold. I, but I have to admit, that was my mind at that point in time. Yeah, it, it's funny, though. Uh, the, a lot of the comparisons being made now, uh, like Josh Allen being what we thought Carson Wentz was when he was kind of going off. Um, I think that Josh Allen would love to win this game and be able to separate himself a little bit from that comparison uh, yeah. because I don't think that's a comparison he likes one bit. But it's one that's until he really wins something big, it, it's not really that unreasonable comparison. Yeah, much like I was saying earlier, um, the reason I'm picking Kansas City is just because I think Buffalo, yeah, they developed a run. They showed me a run game last week, but I still think they're too Josh Allen dependent. And I think you just can't do that against Kansas City. Mm -hmm. I think Kansas City is just too diverse on offense. They have too much firepower for Buffalo to come out and be quarterback dependent. And it looks like the weather for the game, too. They're not anticipating any precipitation or anything crazy like that. Is this, so, this is at Kansas City? or Yeah. yeah. <sighs> toughest. I mean, arguably the toughest place to play in the NFL. Like, the place yeah. is insanely loud. Hard to operate your offense in uh, that building. Very hard I'm to operate. I'm pretty sure so. it's the loudest outdoor stadium. Yeah, they, they set, like, the Guinness record for decibels in an yeah. outdoor stadium or something. They yeah. broke um, the record set by – at the time, Century Link Field. The Seahawks before, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now it's called Lumen Field. But anyway, um, with this, yeah, they met in the regular season. Buffalo kicked Kansas City's ass in that game. But again, it's the regular season. That was early on. Kansas City didn't really have their offensive identity because they were still trying to figure out how to deal with this new look that Tampa Bay brought on them last year in the Super Bowl of the two seat, the two high safety look and taking away the big plays. So I don't think you really saw who Kansas City was in that game against Buffalo in the regular season. Now you're seeing who the real Kansas City is. I mean, as we saw, they just once once they get going, they're they're impossible to stop. And mm -hmm. and so I mean, it's very possible that you know we just see that carry over into this game uh you know the, the chief's offense is electric it's explosive it, it, insert adjective here for what their offense is okay it's just yeah, it's yeah. a very hard offense to stop the bills are the same way though so i mean it, it, fireworks that's that's yeah. my analysis. Uh, he had a very good game the last time they played too. 315 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions for Josh Allen. So uh, he has played big for the Bills against the Chiefs. So he's going to need to play big in this one. Um, and Mahomes is going to need to play better because he did have the two interceptions in that game um, against Buffalo earlier in the year that proved to be um, crucial. So 
Yeah, it's gonna gonna be interesting to see. I, I think at the end of the day, whichever quarterback has a better game, I could see uh, winning this one. Yeah. So I all think right. that does it for our uh, our divisional round preview. We have made uh, all of our picks. Everybody yes, has picked every game. Yep. We have. All right. Uh, time. Not yet. We got a little Brown stuff to clean up. Then we got some NBA stuff. Um, <laughs> Baker, Mayfield, Baker Mayfield had a shoulder surgery today. So, uh, you know, uh, get well, whatever. Uh, hopefully, you Prayers well. for Baker. Uh, continuing. For not uh, just not just for his injury, but for right here too, because he got too much ego. I mean, that's true. Uh, Major's <clears throat> ego is not his and, ego, and uh, not that's bad that he has an ego. It's bad that he doesn't use it properly. He misuses it. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about ego? I misused ego right there. I don't know what your ego man. is. Not your amigo. It, it, they need an adult at quarterback is what they need. That's yeah. I, agree. I agree with that. You think Baker's just a big kid? Yep. Cry baby. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm just tired of the whining. It's like he, so many excuses and so you, much whining you, and everything. It's just like. You think if uh, the if a cop was on the field, that might help? Oh, Jesus. What? Remember that video? Uh, what? I, I know what you're talking about, but let's set this up for the worst transition of all time. Malik McDowell got arrested. Um, Whoa. <laughs> Uh, nice segue. That was a very that was fantastic. Segue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a good segue. He was, he was in Florida. Uh, he was naked by a school. Then he fought the police and then resisted arrest. Uh, Not yeah. a good. Is there story. a video? There's a yeah. video. If you go and search and find it. Um, yeah. But did not look good. Uh, his time in Cleveland is over. Yep. Pretty much officially. A hundred percent. I feel bad for the guy because he's got a, a pattern. This is this is yeah. like the first time he's done something and ended up getting arrested. It, he was in prison before the Browns signed him. Okay, yeah. he spent he six months. Drafted, he was drafted in 2017 in the second round. This was the first year he actually played in the NFL. Okay, yeah. so I, I feel bad for him as a person, but man, just they they, they can't continue having him. On the was he? Uh, uh, so. So basically, he uh, – uh, that does not sound it's, good. It's, I mean, it's, 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 no, if he was doing some public indecency, then I don't think he was likely sober during that time. Uh, who knows if he was or if he wasn't, but He's, either way – I mean, even if he was sober, then there's mental issues at that point. Either way, none of this is a good look. So yeah. uh, the- Bell's time here is done. Yeah, and here's the fact of the matter is that like he was already on his last chance when he came here. Um, not not to quote my own Twitter here, but I tweeted about this yesterday. It was a quote from Malik McDowell at the beginning of the season. Uh, it says, "I told the Browns how much I wanted it and how much I wouldn't let them down, giving me this opportunity, even though I've had chance after chance. And this being my last chance and everything, you all giving me this opportunity, I won't make you look bad." Uh, and yeah. here we are. Yeah. So. You can- if it, if it is a mental issue, if it is a substance abuse issue, there is a pattern there. Um, you know, I, way, I hope he gets the help that he needs. But the fact way, of the matter is, is it's not an excuse. It's, it's, it's not. If it's a mental issue, that's different. If he has no, a I'm mental saying... diagnosis, but if it's an addiction issue, like he's had opportunities to get right. But, Cleveland but gave him a, a very good chance. Too. Yeah. Either I way, mean, it's a mental issue. Sure. Sure. But at, but at but, what level does it become? You you still have to be accountable for your actions. Exactly. Yeah, at that at that point, yeah, I don't think he should be playing football. I think he should be getting some getting sort some of help. That's that's where we're kind of at with this. That's what we're yeah, some, at. Is that he, I mean, he, I think these guys. Guy. Just, you probably need some you, help when you get that much money. Uh, but what money? He hasn't made any money. You're in the NFL. He didn't make he didn't make real money. Not not like superstar money. No, he, he was a second round draft pick, which has a substantial drop off from a first round draft pick. He was like a mid second round, I think, at that. And yeah. Then his contract this year with the Browns was for six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Take out taxes, it's probably like what three hundred thousand. That's before yeah. agents and spending. Uh, he's probably got like I don't know a couple hundred thousand in the bank, but it's not like he's got like Patrick Mahomes fuck you money. No, he doesn't. 
He does. Yeah. It's some money to live off of for like the next year or two, but it's not like he's set for life. Hundred thousand dollars? That could be set for life if you use it properly. No, what what century is this? This is what also a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he could just. Uh, I mean, here in Ohio, I mean, he could find some place. I think that there were some homes that were like fifty-two thousand. Okay, so you paid fifty-two thousand for the house. That's half of your money gone already. That's before spending on bills, food, any other uh, fun luxuries, and then that's before property tax and all the other fun stuff. You probably okay. got like ten grand left to play with. Uh, and not to mention legal fees. The guy's been in a lot of trouble in the past. He has a high powered lawyer who he's been paying for a long time because he's needed a lawyer. Uh, so a lot of his money has been going through his legal team, unfortunately. And that's where, that's where I'm just not giving him the benefit of the doubt here is because look, like I, I empathized with him. I'm a person in recovery. I, I, I am an alcoholic. I have five years in recovery now, but, but showing like, your but, stuff, that's just a whole different the, story. Right. But at the end of the day, it's it, you become accountable for your actions. Once you're aware of what your problem is and you've acknowledged that you have that problem, you become accountable now for your actions moving forward. And that statement that I read, the reason I read that is because he was acknowledging as he signed with the Browns. Look, I know I have a history of getting into trouble. I appreciate you guys giving me a chance. I'm not going to let you down. He had you the opportunity. Right. So the Browns gave him a very, very, very good second chance that a lot of teams probably weren't willing to give them. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm saying, look, you got to hold yourself accountable at this point, bud. Yeah, you just stay at home and watch, watch some Tubi or Netflix or something. Anything, of doing man. Anything. anything. You, you got to know yourself. You got to know yourself and your limitations. And, and hey, Well, they don't even drug test anymore. He could smoke weed. Yeah, I mean that's neither here nor there. But the the point of the matter is, is better that than if, doing what this is. The point of the matter is, is if if he is a drug addict, if he is an alcoholic, like he he's been made aware that like, look, we want to help you, you know, and he's been given the opportunity to get that help, and he's chosen to not. So yeah. at the end of the day, he's making adult decisions. Work. Right, he's making adult decisions and the very poor ones, and he's got to hold himself accountable at the end of the day. So. Correct. He doesn't deserve to play for the Browns anymore, and he no longer is playing for the Browns anymore. Um, so, yeah, not a great way to start the Browns offseason. No, um, but here's uh, some potential optimism for you. What's that? Rank your top three positions the Browns need to address this offseason. Quarterback. 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 quarterback wide receiver. Quarterback, defensive tackle. Wide um, receiver. Linebacker. You, you, you went – Defensive tackle and linebacker. Okay. Uh, wide receiver. Okay, I said three. You, you've you've gone four. Well, I said three. In that case, let me restart. Quarterback. There's one. Defensive tackle. There's two. And a kicker. That's three. That's bizarre. Uh, Josh. That's not bizarre. All right, ready? Quarterback, yeah. quarterback, quarterback. Done. You're choosing the other guy in the newsroom first intro uh, <laughs> strategy with freedom, freedom, freedom there. Uh, Brian. My, my guess was quarterback, wide receiver, and either a defensive line or defensive back, another safety maybe. Yeah, I, I'm at, at three. I would probably say defensive line. Just defensive mm -hmm. line, period. Okay, because defensive tackle, defensive end, they, they need help. Okay. That's where you get the most value to. And that it, it is there. Uh, yeah. Whether trades, free agency, they need to do something, especially because they had such terrible defensive tackle play this year. And if you would like to see a wonderful discussion, go check out my Twitter feed from earlier today. I got to the oh, very, very engaging conversation with uh, some moron who no understands nothing about the defensive tackle position and value mm -hmm. and numbers. And it's very fun. Uh, so defensive tackle, defensive end, I'm um, grouping them together as defensive line. Yeah. Um, Quarterback is number two for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And because they need help, I don't know if they're going to do the big swing. That's why I'm putting it at two and not one because one needs to be wide receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, because I love Jarvis Landry. I don't know if he's going to be here. Uh, That's something yeah. we have to acknowledge. Jar Jarvis um, seems like he's, I mean, he's still productive and he does what he does, but like he's not having the Pro Bowl numbers he used to. Uh, well, part of that's because of the quarterback. And that's a very large function of why his numbers are down. Okay. Uh, he has a very high salary, a very low dead cap number. Uh, if any, right. I, don't, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Uh, but 
there's a way for them to shed like $14 million in salary by getting rid of him this off season, which seems possible. Uh, it, if you follow certain people on Twitter, seems like something that's been in the making for years now. Uh, but you don't know if he's going to be back. Rashard Higgins cannot be back. Um, so that leaves you with Donovan Peoples Jones and Anthony Schwartz as your wide receivers, and that's not NFL. Can't have it. Can't, have it. can't have it. Anthony uh, Schwartz. No, I, I. Anthony Schwartz was terrible. He he's was awful. awful. Okay. You guys aren't giving him a chance. He's just a rookie. He's only he's fast, he, and that's it. He can't fast. Pass the ball. We that's had a conversation post draft, Chirk. If you, you remember, you know what I'm looking up right now, right? Go ahead and look it up, and I'll explain to you the conversation we had eight months ago, and that was he Ooh. can't track the ball in the air. Okay, no. me only 135 yards on, one show. on our radio show. We had this conversation about his failures as a receiver, and he can't yeah, track yeah. the ball in the air. And that's what we saw this season. He's not a good tracker maybe, of the ball in the air. Maybe Hollywood but, Higgins. Hollywood Higgins should not be back. It's no. time to end this. End this. It's ridiculous. When yeah, we want to talk players that are potentially washed, there's one we could talk about. Yeah, so Ooh, Hollywood hard. Higgins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if you want my real list, I'll give you that. I was just trying to be funny by saying quarterback, quarterback, quarterback. Um, that's how much I don't like Baker Mayfield anymore. But in all seriousness, my list is very similar to yours, James. Mm-hmm. I just have quarterback one, wide receiver two. And then I would also agree. I would go more – instead of defensive line, I have a couple concerns about our offensive line. So I – would want the Browns to address those. I mean, that's fair. Uh, this offensive line could be a unit in transition this year. Uh, it seems like Wyatt Teller could be gone. Not Wyatt Teller. I'm sorry. JC Treader could be gone next year. Uh, there's also an out in Jack Conklin's contract, which gives the Browns more flexibility that can be exercised as well. Jedrick mm-hmm. Wills was not very good this year. He's no, really, he, he's really a uh, best league average tackle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we don't good. know what his long-term future has ear either. So that could be a position group in – transition but i imagine if they don't have uh treaders or something it's gonna be nick harris okay i mean with jedrick i would give him more time i think he could be better he can be better sure but at what point do you say the guy gets hurt too much and he's just a liability right after like the fourth or fifth season you you can't wait that long you 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 know within a year Uh, in fact coaches know within the first practice whether the guy is actually worth a damn or not okay why we draft him so high all it takes is one practice for a coaching staff and a teammates to know whether a guy's worth a shit. That's all it takes. But but sometimes they can be deceived. That's that's not how that works. Those that guys are really, really not how work it works. The time. How, they, how do you tell someone has injury problems if they perform well during no, that performance practice? wise, not injury problem. Performance wise, they know whether they got it or not in the first practice. Right. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. But James, I don't disagree with you about the defensive line. I think that also definitely needs some work because. Other than Miles Garrett, who do we really have? I just feel like the yeah, other. Jadavion Clowney. Uh, he's going to get himself a nice, wonderful, giant deal elsewhere. Okay. Not here. It, Not actually, here. it could be here. It actually could be here. If, if, if I am going to completely destroy this front office if they sign him to a big ter- a big money deal. They uh, shouldn't. They, the, the repeatability of what he did this past year is just so low. The likelihood of it is so low. To be healthy and have as many sacks he, as he had, it's just he had like a Pro Bowl season. Don't I make think I mean, it happening again. Okay, you can't. Um, but I, you look at their defensive tackles. It's McDowell's gone. Bleak Jackson's going to be gone. You're left with Tommy Togiai and Jordan Elliott. Togiai is a long term guy you hope develops. Okay, right. Jordan Elliott is meh. You're going to need to add four defensive tackles of some caliber to this defensive line just as a baseline. To start yeah. with, that's before adding another defensive end, a backup defensive end, and a backup for Miles Garrett because Tack McKinley ain't going to be back next year either. We need some depth at defensive back too. Like we need yeah. a free safety that can actually play free safety. Like we we need help Delta's there as well. Not the, like, answer. the the problem with this Browns team is like we thought that we were like a piece or two away, and the problem is is that we're a lot of pieces away. Mm-hmm. Um, like we all have like there's an argument to be made about almost every position on the field that the Browns need to address it in some way, whether it's they don't have a talented enough player that's starting or they need more depth at it. Um, There's problems all over this roster. It's just not good. Um, Luckily, I I think we have a favorable schedule next year, but 
other than that, it's not a lot to look up about with the Browns. Yeah. I honestly thought about putting running back on my list, to be frank with you. Because other than Chubb, I don't know if we can – Dearness Johnson had a couple of nice games. I'll say that, but – I don't know if he can do that over a full season. Well, you don't need him to. He's a backup. Yeah. He's yeah. a backup yeah. right now. Uh, if He's anything, a great backup you're, running back. You're looking at the expoundability of Kareem Hunt there, which gives you a little bit more flexibility elsewhere in the offense. Okay, That's they gotta do some, They got to do something with him. You know, I don't he, know. he was hurt so much. The dude's got no trade value. I, I, I Honestly, cutting him seems like it's going to be a possibility. Yeah. And, and, we got, and we got that other running back, too, who's really good. Dearness Johnson. Johnson, yeah, yeah, we just like yeah, we he, he's a great him. replacement to the one-two punch. He fits more. I'm just even as a backup, you gotta be able to do it on a more consistent basis. That's can, all. Can, I mean. Yeah, is, if is you want to argue a guy that hasn't fit in the Browns' offense, though, it's not OBJ. It's Kareem Hunt. He's a guy yeah. that just does not fit. Yes, you know, it's a it's just not the right style of running that we do. Uh, so I'm totally okay with him trimming the fat and cutting his salary and moving yeah, on. From I'm him. all right with that. Yeah. yeah. He was never a guy I was excited about bringing here anyway for off the field issues, but on the field, Fair you point. know, there, there's also a lot of ar- arguments to be made about like, why, why bring him here in the beginning? He was never uh, the type of running back that's going to, you know, operate in this style of offense. We, you know, well, he's never been a zone guy. I will so. say uh, the only the only good – yeah, he wasn't the best. The only good thing about uh, uh, play-wise about him was he could catch the ball. Mm-hmm. That was about so it. So with, with this surgery that Baker's undergoing, he's expected to be ready to go by training camp, correct? I, I believe so, uh, barring, barring no setbacks. But, you know, shoulders are weird. Will, yeah. will he say something stupid on social media during that time? Yeah, probably. I mean, he's going to have a lot of idle time to do nothing. So yeah, what 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 kind of things could you see him saying? Like just uh, like, yeah, probably engage with people who shouldn't be engaging with someone stupid like Colin Coward. But that's yeah. really besides the point. <laughs> James, <laughs> do, you, do you still think he's on his way out, or, or are you starting to feel like we're stuck with him here? Because the the closer, the farther away it gets from the end of our season, the more and more I feel like we're going to be stuck with Baker Mayfield next year. It, it really depends on who's available. Um, because you don't know who's going to be available for the Browns. It, is Baker right. just the squatter on the team? Just, just he's doesn't a want to go. He's a, he's a doesn't want to go. go back. <laughs> you look at who's possibly available. Derek Carr could be available. Jimmy G could be available. Kirk Cousins could be available. Those are probably the guys that are the guys you replace Baker with. Like, and I'm not crazy excited in, about any of those guys. They're not. They're not super exciting. But if you need to make a switch, which I think they do. That's the guy you bring into a place. Now, if you're bringing yeah, in guys yeah. to challenge him for the job, less exciting individuals here. And that'd be Mitch Trubisky, Marcus Mariota, possibly trying to give uh, Baker his best Ryan Tannehill impression and run him out of town. Um, what about famous Jameis? I wouldn't touch him <laughs> at all. Uh, we... Jameis Winston's got Pittsburgh Steelers written all over it. Yeah. How about the return of the lucky one? Who the hell is the lucky one? Why not? No, we don't. Who's no, the lucky we don't. One? I've never heard that. The lucky name. one. The one who can turn this franchise around. One guy who was in retirement. Oh, you mean Andrew Luck. Jesus Christ. We're not talking. Oh. He's out of football. Um, can we just move on, please? Yeah, you guys are shutting him down. You won't be, you'll be surprised when he comes back to the Browns. Let's just move he's on, not. please. Right, here's an NBA topic. You say yeah. he's not. You can't predict the future. We have, we have right. 17 minutes left. We if it were to happen, what would be your reaction? So Paul okay. George. Oh, Paul yeah. George is out. He's going to miss a few more weeks, according to Watch. He's All right. recovering we're from – We're shutting that conversation down, I see. 100%. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's recovering from a Those torn ACL and it. shooting elbow. So we'll start there. Okay. Uh, Paul George being out, not great for the Clippers. Um, not great. They're, no. they're kind of hovering around uh, that – Bottom end of the uh, the playoff hunt in the, uh, the Western Conference. It's just not having Paul George is not a, not great for them. Yeah, they're missing the future Hall of Famer, James. He's not a Hall of Famer. <laughs> I but knew you were going to say that. Because he's yeah, not. I, Sorry. Because he's not. I can share my – All right, be- let's – you know what I was about Wait. to pull up? What are you about to pull up, Chirk? What, what wonderful numbers that don't matter are you going to pull up? 
How, he's going to make the Hall of Fame. No. On no. what basis? And why did Rich Mitch, bleh, Rich Rich bleh, Mitch Richmond make the Hall of Fame? I, I don't know why Mitch Richmond made the Hall of Fame. Was he in the Olympic team? Could no, anybody? he made the Hall of Fame. He's got five-time All-NBA third teams. Who? Uh, Paul George and one-time first team. You're the one only time first teamer, and you think one that's time. a Hall of Famer? One and time, and then all NBA third teams. So yeah, but the third, so he's the, the essentially the third best player at his position. Yeah, that's not Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame is you're you're, you're the number one player at your position for a or sustainable number, amount of time. Then then how come Mitch Richmond made the Hall of Fame? Okay, you keep going back to this guy that nobody in the world cares about. Yeah. It's not it just team. doesn't the comparison doesn't it's apples to oranges. You can't compare yep. the two. Yeah. Anyway, so going back to the actual topic at hand, the original topic at hand. I mean, I already didn't think the Clippers were gonna do much because they were with already without Kawhi Leonard for whoever who knows however long. And for them to now be without Paul George, um, to borrow from a, I guess, an early 2000s kind of 90s board game, you sunk my battleship. Yeah, I think both LA teams are, you could stick a fork in both of them this season. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I agree too. Yep. I Good think for the NBA. Can- I just think you can stick more of a fork in the Clippers than you can the Lakers. I mean, because you don't know what complete overhaul LeBron's going to just kind of put together and flip around uh, 90% of that roster. Precisely. Yeah. We know that's coming. Precisely. It's coming. Yep, that's uh, actually, about you know, to up. We can be talking uh, by deadline day, and uh, you know the starting line with the Lakers is going to be LeBron, Anthony Davis, DeMontas, Sabonis, and De'Aaron Fox for all we know. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's be honest. The the possibility of that happening is more likely than them continuing to run whatever they have for the rest yeah, of the year. Yeah. I was shocked to see that today too that De'Aaron Fox is now on the table because uh wow. earlier in the year it was it was he was off, you know, it was I I just don't understand that. It's puzzling. I don't either. He's I, a guy. Kings yeah. being the Kings. It's be, yeah. continued irrelevance is what that is. Yep. 100%. I mean, they are in the playoff one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Okay, well, it, look, I guess we'll flip to this because, in my opinion, mid-January is where teams start to round into form. But in terms of the Kings, no. They're, no. Go away, Sacramento. They're, they're, they're looking to blow it up. They're looking to trade De'Aaron Fox. Buddy Heald has had his own trade rumors about him. They're looking to – I don't know what they're looking to do. They're looking to continue to suck. Okay? Buddy Heald would be a good fit on the Cavs right now. He would be a fantastic fit on the Cavs, but I don't 100%. see that happening. Yeah. We'll the Cavs talk in a few more minutes. We have a couple more things first. Cool. Miles Turner is going to be out for the beyond the trade deadline. Uh, he's still a trade option for the Pacers because the Pacers are just whatever. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, uh, they're looking to just trade anyone and everyone. Uh, but I could see him getting moved uh, at some point. If we trade uh, Markkinen for him, I would take him as our power forward. Well, Miles Turner is not a power forward. Yeah, yeah. I know, but. Anyway, he can, shoot the three. he can shoot the three. Uh, but uh, a trade that did happen, uh, Bull Bull was traded last night uh, after his trade to Detroit was shut down because of a medical issue. Uh, he did have surgery, which is going to be out for like the next three months. Uh, it, it seems like he was just included in the trade to help facilitate the trade, but he is now right. in Boston and he's a Celtic. Hooray, yes. we got the Bull Celtics Bull seem Boston. like they really like tall guys. They got Bull Bull and now they got. Or not Bobo. They got uh, Taco, and now they got uh, Bobo. Yeah, so Bobo is in Boston. Speaking of former Celtics, Kyrie Irving not wavering on his vaccine stance despite KD being injured. Why are we talking about him? Why, why, why? Because this is we have to. He's yeah. one of the best players we, in the NBA. We, we also have player. to bring up two. Actually, we're getting to Cavs in a minute, but this has to do with Kyrie and the Cavs. Yeah, we'll get to that in one second. But we're talking about Kyrie for this reason. KD's hurt. We don't know when he's going to be back. Kyrie is not changing his stance on a uh, a mandate which would allow him to play in his own state, in his own stadium. Even when they go to play the Knicks, he still can't play in those games. He's not changing his stance on something that would allow him to play, and that matters. 
Yeah. That matters, especially since the Nets don't have Kevin Durant. Exactly. Yeah, I'll, give, I'll give you that. I think the Nets could actually slip in the stand in the Eastern Conference standings as a result of this. No, they're not going to fall out of the playoffs. I'm not going to say that. I'm not that stupid. Um, or actually, stupid's the wrong word. I'm not that crazy. But still, I think the Nets could slip in the standings as a result of both the camp. The Kevin Durant injury and Kyrie being a uh, coward. I, I don't. I'm not, gonna put it. Say, I'm not going to call I'm him a coward. Sure. Okay. I, I disagree um, with him, but I'm not. I, I disagree. Him a coward. With his, I, I disagree with the stance on his vac- on the vaccine thing. But I'm not going to call him a coward. Yeah, um, he's a man of his convictions. Now, believe now would you call him a coward though? For what do you think about the ungrateful thing he said about the Cavs just recently when he played oh, against? That, oh, uh, let's 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 is a good transition because we can go into Cavs uh, next because we're forgot, we're talking about the next next game. Um, that fan that yelled at him got exactly what he was deserving. Uh, yeah. That fan was an asshole. Yeah, um, uh, Kyrie Irving was part of a team that ended a citywide championship drought. Yeah, I give Kyrie why, credit for that. Well, why are you heckling Kyrie Irving? Yeah. Why are we still doing this? Because yeah, people still hold it. grudges against Kyrie for the uh, way he left. Well, I, I, hate, I hate to say it too, but his stance on the vaccine has also got him a lot of heckling as well. There, there are some people that feel very strongly about his stance on that, and they do uh, call him a coward, among other things, for his stance on that. So regardless of what you think of it, he gets this a lot. Um it's just an unfortunate reality, but you know, this is why I won't call him a coward because in, in spite of all that, and in spite of all the things that people say and the media say about him, he mm-hmm. stands by his convictions. So yeah. whether you, whether you agree with what he believes or not uh, is neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. Um, he seems like a guy who at least has integrity. So I wouldn't call him a coward, but yeah, yeah he's making a very selfish decision. Yeah. That's and that's, part, that's yeah. part of the reason why I'm calling him a coward is because because he's put himself first rather than his team. And I just think that's a very cowardly move. And he's, I think it's also like, he's just, it feels like he's ignoring everyone. Like, I don't care. I don't care about any of you. Like the, I think Kevin Durant was going to go to the Knicks before Kyrie Irving came in and said, no, let's go to the Nets. And then for Kyrie to just pretty much almost bail on him, on Durant in a way, I don't like that. And, you know, Kyrie coming out and saying, yeah, we don't really need a coach. We can coach ourselves and all this and that. It just, for me, it seems like a cowardly move. That's why I'm calling him a coward. I'll say he's an odd dude. Let's put it that way. He's someone who's uh, eccentric. He's very firm in what he believes in. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, uh, I don't agree with the stance on the vaccine, but that's, that's me. Here's the Uh, thing though, is we can't have it both ways. You know, a lot of people say shut up and dribble to these guys. and, And it's like, you can't have it both ways. If you want these guys to be able to be, Uh, able to have opinions and voice opinions you also have to be okay with the fact that maybe their opinion you're not going to like so you can't have it both ways so so for the people who are angry with Kyrie for being honest and open I don't get that yeah I think personally uh, and I said this a while ago I think the compromise could have been doing the extra test with him I mean, it, it's it's not something that he he can necessarily agree to, or that's some something that the NBA can facilitate. This is a this is a right. New York right. State issue that, because I think that could have been an alternative. This is a yeah. this is a government issue. It's not an NBA or collective bargaining agreement type thing. So this right. is not right. something that they have. They do have an option to pay like a five thousand dollar fine every time he plays a game, but uh, I don't think they're they're really uh, excited about you know dropping that much money uh, for him just to play in games. Um, right. But let's move on to the game that did happen, though. The Cavs did beat the Nets. Uh, yes, they did. Yeah, no, yes, they did. You, you think this team is a fi- finals con- dark horse finals? Contender? They're not a dark horse no. finals. No, team. No, 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 no. Okay, they can go in the second round. I'll give them that. Uh, here's what I'll say: good win, but if Kevin Durant played that game, the Cavs would have lost by thirty. Yeah, I'm sure. Was, uh... with, with Isaac Okoro back. Who cares about Isaac Okoro? Uh, them not having Kevin Durant matters a thousand times more than Isaac Okoro being there. 
that game was not as close as the score indicated either. At the, <laughs> at the end, at the end, it was close yeah. throughout the game. But that that the end of that game, the, it was it really would have been dominated by uh, by, by Brooklyn if Durant was playing. I, yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, he wasn't playing. Our guys yeah, were. Anyway. We won the game. We're only a game and a half out of first place. Uh, and then we face the Bulls tonight, who are tied for first place. So yeah, here we are, the Cavs. Game and a half out of first place in the Eastern Conference, and it's January 19th. Yeah. Whoa. So awesome. We yeah. had this discussion off mic through texting. Um, I know we have vastly different opinions about this, and hey, that's okay. It makes for better content that way. Um, I understand, Brian and James, why you guys say like it does like the season doesn't officially start till after all-star break, and that's when you see teams start to round into form. I see your point on that. Mm -hmm. But for me, we're about 40-ish games into the season, roughly, I think, if I'm if I'm doing the math, right? I'm not always the best at math. I'm not afraid We're over math. halfway through the season. So we are. Yeah. Okay. So we're over halfway through the season. I think now is when the t around the time you begin to see – teams start to separate themselves not fully because you know if you look at the eastern conference it's a complete log jam at the exactly top. you said this on tsg brian everybody's within five games of each other and that's not necessarily see everybody in the playoff picture one through ten are all within five and a half games Yes, thank you for helping me clarify that i appreciate so that. Uh, just like the Cavs are only a, a game and a half out of first we're only four games out of last. So. Sure. Uh, sure. I'll, I totally understand that. But for them to even be in this position. That, that we agree with. Yeah, it's awesome yeah. that they're there. Yeah, It's exciting. It, it's good. It's fun. It's encouraging. Right. Mm -hmm. But I just need to see more. I really do. Because yeah. the post-All-Star break, honestly, honestly, is where you see definitive separation. Sure, stuff mm. might start to happen now. But it's still so congested. You, you, yeah. It, until we have enough, or or the separation between first and tenth is more than a half, what half dozen games, less than right, that. Right. You, less, you're, yeah. you really can't even really make swinging judgments about anyone. Yeah. Right. You, you too, really have to wait for more information, more games. I'll give you that. Um, I will say this about the next game. Sure, they didn't have Kevin Durant, and that made a huge difference. But they still had James Harden and Kyrie Irving. That That is still a very potent team. That's still a very dangerous team. They, they are, even without Kevin Durant, as long as they have Harden and Irving in the road games, they're still one of the top teams. So They're, they're still good, but, I mean, like, we're, we're talking – what tier two stars here? Mm -hmm. So uh, if Kevin Durant's a superstar. Then there's stars. Then there's tier two guys. I think Kyrie and James Harden are both tier two guys. Okay, I, agree. But I, yeah. I still think it's a very impressive win for the Cavs, not just because of beating the Nets, but also because of this. We had just come off of a grueling six-game road trip where you had to play five games. In seven days, two sets of back-to-backs, a majority of the games on that road trip came right down to the wire, including that game in Oklahoma City where somehow we were trailing by double digits. <laughs> so for them to come out and put on that type of performance against a team Elect. that many consider to be a finals favorite, win fully healthy and all that, that's a big statement win. I'm not going to go statement win. I'll say encouraging that they didn't blow it. How's that sound? Yeah. Uh, I'll that, give you that it was a good win for the reasons you were saying, that they're coming off a long road trip. The first game at home off a long road trip is always hard. Um, yeah. For those who yeah. gamble, everybody knows that that's a game that is very, very difficult to uh, to play. So, yeah, it's encouraging, but um, 
it, let, let's see it towards the end of the season with both squads fully healthy and, and then we'll talk more, you know, Yeah. because it's sure. just, it's just too, too early. Things are too tight right now. We need to, uh, to, to kind of wait and see how things sort of separate themselves and how the waters settle. Yep. Uh, we are on our final minute here. Uh, two little, uh, news of note things to, uh, Acknowledge uh, Willie O'Ree is having his number, uh, number 22, retired by the Bruins. Uh, Finally. First African-American hockey player, uh, played 45 games for the Bruins, scored four goals, had 10 assists, uh, playing uh, in two games in 57-58 and 43 in 60-61. So very, very much uh, belated on that, but it, he is getting his number retired. And uh, in terms of some baseball news, because we have – some kind of news. Carlos Correa switched agents to Scott Boris, looking to get that super deal. Apparently, he was looking for a three hundred thirty million dollar deal, similar to what Corey Seager got from the Rangers. Yeah, that's that's crazy talk to me for a six foot four shortstop who has back problems. Mm. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even touch it. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it's the right time to bar or to uh, to do this uh, because there's definitely not going to be any action anytime soon on the field. So if ever there was a time to make moves like this to hire a new agent, it's now because uh, unfortunately I don't think we're going to be seeing baseball anytime soon. Neither oh, no. do I. Gonna be a minute. Yeah, gonna be a minute. Huge bummer. But yeah, Willie O'Reilly, big one, uh, first black player in the NHL. Uh, yeah, good on the Bruins for retiring his number. But yeah, it should have been one of the first numbers that they retired. So uh, yeah. good on them. But yeah, it's good to see him finally getting the recognition he deserves, uh, especially on Martin Luther King Day. Uh, really cool how the, the Bruins did that. So good on them. Um, yeah, and it's just nice to, to hear about baseball and know that baseball is still a sport that exists because I love baseball. And I want it to come back so bad, but it is yeah. just a bleak atmosphere right now for baseball fans. Pretty bleak. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. All right. Well, anybody have any last thoughts before we leave? Uh, I, I think that's it. We've gone through the entire rundown. Been a really fun show. Thank you guys for being here, being on time. Um, but yeah, any last words before we move on? Due to your vote and also some pushback, no more singing up from me. And so what's the catch? Yeah. No. All right. Brian, no promises on that for TSG, though. Oh, okay. That's fair. Oh, All right. Well, vocal co- if you are <laughs> going to do it, get some vocal coaching. There you go. There we go. <laughs> Chirk will support you through that. If, if, if you want <laughs> you to, we'll hold your hand and we'll speaking. make sure that you, you make it to your appointments and whatnot on time. <laughs> All right, guys. It's been fun like always. I love you guys. We'll see you guys later. See you. All right. See ya. Peace. He's still... He forgot.